tonight from the great southwest, the Valley of the Sun. It's a home opener for the Phoenix Cardinals, and the weatherman has provided a rather warm reception for the Philadelphia Eagles as temperature kickoff time is well over 100 degrees. TNT Sunday Night Football featuring two NFC East rivals as the Eagles and Cardinals beat in Sun Devil Stadium in Tempe. The NFC East has been called the toughest division of the National Football League, the Beast of the East, if you will. They have won four of the last six Super Bowls. After today's action, the Cowboys are in first place at 2-0, beating the Giants, who fell to 0-2. It's the Cowboys' first 2-0 start since 86. Washington, on the other hand, even their record at 1-1, beating the Falcons 24-17, and the Falcons are now 0-9 in RFK Stadium. So today, the Eagles have an opportunity to climb into a first-place tie with Dallas with a victory here tonight over the Phoenix Cardinals. Hi, everybody. I'm Gary Bender. The Cardinals under Joe Bugle are 3-13 and against the NFC East, but two of those wins have come at the expense of the Philadelphia Eagles. Interestingly enough, the last two years, they've won the second game of the year, and Pat Hayden, Randall Cunningham was not there last year. He was out with that severe knee injury. But watching him last week, it looks like he's back physically. Well, you know, it's really interesting. Coming back from an injury, a severe injury, is one thing. But coming back with confidence is completely another thing. And Randall Cunningham, last week against New Orleans, came back with confidence. He got banged up a little bit, yet he came back from the six sacks. He threw two touchdowns, didn't have any interceptions. Here's a guy who played very well. He played without fear of that knee, scrambled around some as well. But the Eagles don't want him to be the full show tonight, Gary. They want to come out and run the football. You're going to see Herschel Walker in a one-back set run the ball over the right side. They want to feature Her Herschel early in this game. Well, Tim Rosenbaugh had his own severe knee injury. He missed the whole year. He really is the heart of this Cardinal team. Well, the Cardinal coaches say our team even breaks the huddle better with Tim Rosenbaugh, and it's the truth. Here's a guy in 1990, in his second year, really did play well, threw for 16 touchdown passes, and there's very simple tonight. If this is not going to be a mismatch, Tim Rosenbaugh has to play well, and they have to run the ball. They need four big plays out of the passing game. That's what Joe Bugle has said, but it's going to be tough running and passing the ball against the most dominant defensive team in the entire NFL and that is the Philadelphia Eagles, led by that man, Reggie White. And they're dominant because they have dominating players like White and Seth Joyner. And they're also dominating because they play with an attitude. Seth Joyner and his teammates play with a chip on their shoulders, an arrogance, if you will, and they back it up, Gary. Well, Pat, you said it very well. As the Eagles have won the toss, they have elected to receive. You saw the temperature now at 102 degrees. It will go down some, but not a lot. They always advertise here in the Valley of the Sun. It's a dry heat, but I'm sure most of the players don't want to hear that right now. Joe Bugle trying to get the Cardinals back to a winning season. In his third year, he is 9-24. and 24. They have lost nine games in a row. They haven't had a winning season since 1984. Rich Kotite in his second year was 10-6 and six last year. They did miss the playoffs. But what adversity he went through. The loss of Cunningham we talked about. Jerome Brown this year. Also, he had to really overcome the anger of players that were fiercely loyal to Buddy Ryan. Greg Davis now will kick it off for the Cardinals. By Sikahema, who used to play here in Sun Devil Stadium for the Cardinals. And Herschel Walker back deep. a very surprising move. They didn't even line up. They came out of that huddle and kicked off. Sikahema will go to a knee. And from the 20-yard line, the Eagles have set it up. Randall Cunningham does so many things well. He can beat you with his feet. He can beat you with his arm. And he can beat you with his mind. I mean, I don't think he gets enough credit for the audibles he called. As a matter of fact, last week, the touchdown pass to Fred Barnett that he threw was an audible. I mean, he uses his mind. He knows when to run. He knows when to throw. He knows when to duck. He played 16 minutes last year, going down in quarter number two against Green Bay. From the 20, Philadelphia. Walker, the single running back, and he'll get it. He carried it 26 times last week. Bounces outside. Good ad lib effort. There was nothing there, and he picks up three. Ken Harvey eventually over to make the stop. So Walker with that 100-yard day a week ago. And let's look at the line, much maligned, but coming on, 
Eric Floyd, a plan B guy from the Chargers. Antone Davis, their number one draft pick a year ago. And Byers, an unfamiliar position to tight end. He's Sherman had a strong game last week. He'll line up along with Walker, Fred Barnett, and Calvin Williams. Excellent wide receivers. Second and seven. It'll be Herschel again. Big hole off the left side. He's got the first down to the 31. Michael Sortich up an eight-yard pickup on the play. And the Cardinals could not stop the run last year, can they today? Faulkner, Waller, and Jones up front. Jones has had a strong first game. The strength of this team is Freddie Joe Nunn and Ken Harvey at the outside linebacking positions. But their superstar is Tim McDonald, the strong safety. And if they don't stop the run, Gary, you're going to see a lot more of plays like that from Herschel Walker. This is the perfect complement to Randall Cunningham. Herschel Walker has picked up the first down on two carries to the 30. Cunningham with his first pass of the night. And the completion is made to Barnett at the 35. Fred Barnett with Freddie Joe Nunn dropping back and Aeneas Williams a gain of eight. And Barnett, who was out almost the entire preseason with a shoulder problem, just starting to get his timing with Cunningham. Well, and you're right. And what Fred Barnett does, I think a terrific job of, he snatches the ball. He does not wait for the ball to get, get to him. And you prevent uh, interceptions that way, and you prevent inter incompletions like right there. If he doesn't snatch that ball, that's an incompletion. Second and two. Sprint draw handoff to Walker, and he's got the first down. He looks like the Walker we saw last week against the Saints as he picks up another first down. Last week, 26 carries, 114 yards. Yeah, and why does he look that way? But Because, what? first of all, there's no penetration. You don't see any white jerseys really disrupting the throw. The play has a chance to develop. Pat Beach, 83, gets a block. A block. The Mike Shad, number 79, gets a block, and then he just kind of fills in behind that. But no early penetration allowed the play to develop slowly. First time they'd had 100 yards in opening day was 1934 by an eagle back. Walker again. Walker this time for maybe two, three. The ball comes loose, but I think it was ruled down by contact. Tim McDonald was up there defending for the Cardinals. Gary, offensive linemen love to start a game like this. They love to, you, you, we talk about getting in rhythm. Throwers getting in rhythm, receivers getting in rhythm, but nobody talks about offensive linemen doing that. And the Eagles right now, you come out, you run the ball, you pick up a first down with Herschel Walker running, you get some confidence. You, there, there is this thing called rhythm of running, and offensive linemen need to get into it. And make a couple of hits up there, right? Yeah. Knock somebody backwards. Second and eight. Barnett is in motion. Play action. Cunningham. He gets away from none. He dumps it off to Pat Beach, the tight end. First down. There is really vintage Randall Cunningham. In trouble, ad libs, and completes the ball for 11 yards. Well, you know, Randall Cunningham has a unique ability. And first, you can take a look at the, at the fake. Now, if they were going to run the ball as well as they have thus far, those kind of fakes, you can have some wide open receivers. But the ability to extend the play is what Randall Cunningham, I think, does as well as any quarterback. He and maybe John Elway. And the NFL, when you think about it, at the end of extended plays is a lot of touchdowns. 11-yard completion. He's Sherman now in the backfield with Walker. Play action by Cunningham. None. Collapsing the pocket a little bit. He dumps it off instead to Herschel. Check that. Heath Sherman and Sherman just short of the 35-yard line. A gain of seven. And this is a well-orchestrated drive, really mixing it up well. Yeah, absolutely. You got some runs, power runs. You got some finesse runs. Then you come back around the play action fake. You know, think about Randall Cunningham, I think, too. For a strong-armed guy, he can throw with some touch. You know, a lot of guys who drill the ball in there don't, aren't able to take something off it. But I think Randall Cunningham has as much touch as any quarterback in the NFL. Second and two. Williams in motion, give to Herschel, and he's hit by Jeff Faulkner, who closed down from that defensive end spot. Going to be just short of the first down. Let's flip it over on the Phoenix defense. What do they have to do to stop this run? And, and guys like Jeff Faulkner. Well, you can't stay blocked. 
you're going to get blocked by the big offensive lineman, but you can't stay blocked. It's a matter of attitude. You have to be refused. You have to refuse to stay blocked. It's going to be a second effort kind of game for guys like Jeff Faulkner and Jim Waller, the nose tackle, and Mike Jones, the other tackle. Those guys up front are going to be the difference in this Phoenix Cardinal defense today. They could not stop the run last year. They gave up 27 rushing touchdowns. And Joe Bugle, being in the NFCs for so long, knows that you got to have the ability to stop what he calls those black toppers, where they run yeah. right over you. In the NFC East, you've got to run, and you must stop the run. Otherwise, you lose. As we anticipated, they are short of the first down. <laughs> Interesting play coming up here. Third down, half yard as Kotite, a guy who, in visiting with him last night, I think really understands this Philadelphia team. It's hard. He came in as an offensive coordinator for Buddy Ryan, then was elevated to the position, but he really understands the emotion of the team so well. Yeah, you're right. I think he is in great touch with his players. And in, in, in all the teams we see around the NFL, this team plays very well together. Third and a half. Walker, got it. You know, the interesting thing about Herschel Walker, I believe, is a lot of people over the last few years have said all the things that Herschel Walker can't, uh, can't do. A lot of people have been down on Herschel Walker. But I think there's some exceptional things that he does. I think he's the best short yardage runner in professional football. And he's a great receiver. He has always been a good short yardage receiver. Jim Waller, the nose tackle there, number 66, for the Cardinals did a good job of backing up David Alexander, but still, Walker finds a crease for the first. He took all the blame for that trade from Dallas to Minnesota. First down. Whoops. And movement, Jim Waller, the nose tackle, making a collision with Dave Alexander. Dave Alexander, the anchor of that offensive line. But that's going to be a good matchup to watch. If he sits on the defense. First down. So Waller guilty that Bernie Kukar, our referee. Again, sometimes you use your up. Oh, hello. That's why you have face masks. And Randall wears a wears a mouthpiece. And one of the few quarterbacks actually in the league who, who uh, wear mouth mouthpieces. Tenth play of this drive. The drive starting from the 20. First and five. Walker to the left side, nice cut back. He's very close to the first down across the 25. Tyrone Stowe, hard hitting inside linebacker over to make the stop. Offensive linemen need confidence. The only way you get confidence is by running the ball with success. And right now, the Eagles are gonna do that. Now, the, Philadelphia, uh, the Phoenix defense this has been a, it's a zone type of defense. Keep, uh, keep everything in front of you. The front three, though, Waller, number 66, a little ways to go. Faulkner and Jones are going to have to slip some blocks. Right now, they're staying blocked. This drive taking a lot of time. 8.07 left in the first quarter. Look at this. 6.53 is expired. If you go on the road, this is the best way to start a football well, game. Absolutely. Take the crowd out. Make the other team play a lot of defense. Seven of those ten plays, Herschel Walker runs. Second down, inches. Walker, the single running back. Herschel again, and as Pat was saying, so tough in short yardage, he got enough there, even though he was shoved backwards by Jim Waller. Well, Jim Waller and David Alexander have a pretty good battle going on this opening drive. Waller, number 66 there. I think you don't see too many nose tackles get through that quickly on short yardage. He just flails around in there. He does. There's no, you know, Waller's the kind of guy, plays nose tackle, you don't find any, you know, tasseled loafers in his closet, you know? <laughs> Kind of a jeans and t-shirt kind of guy. I know he doesn't wear socks anyway. <laughs> First down. Cunningham and the Eagles, very impressive. Randall wanting to throw. Overthrown, intended for Barnett at the 20. Aeneas Williams, who was a little questionable earlier in the week as he caught a helmet in the thigh in the game against Tampa Bay defending. First incomplete pass of the night as Cunningham now three of four. 
Well, this Phoenix defense, Randall Cunningham is going to face a zone defense all night. You're going to see guys deep in, a, in, in the uh, formation here. It, you, you have to keep the passes in front of these guys. If you don't keep it in front of them and you get impatient, you're going to get tip balls and you're going to get some interceptions. All the defenders are looking at the quarterback all the time. This time, Byers comes in alongside Cunningham in the shotgun. Second and ten. Far side. Catch is made by Bicicahema. He is so effective coming out of the backfield. Seven-yard pickup on the play. He's got the shades for the sun. Nice look of Bi. Uh, the, the orange Mesa, shades. He grew up here in the Mesa area, went to high school, played for the Mesa Jackrabbits, and of course for the Phoenix Cardinals. Well, you know, he's, a, he's always been a terrific punt returner and third down back. You know, Harmon at San Diego, and you got Dave Meggett at, with the Giants. Sikahema is the guy for the uh, for the Eagles this year. On third down, he has a feel for the option routes when he gets one-on-one -on -one coverage with linebackers and nickelbacks. Plus, what a job he does on punt returns. Third down. He's going to have to throw that one out of the back of the end zone. Barnett was the closest to it, but he just had to get rid of it. And so the Cardinals, after this long drive, have finally forced him to a fourth down. But that's exactly what the Cardinal defense is about. I mean, I thought three different guys had the ball on this one, quite honestly. First, I thought Herschel had it. Then I thought maybe Byers was going to get it. Then I thought he was going to hand it to Heller to tackle, and boom. You know, actually, he had Barnett open there. It looked like Cunningham was throwing that ball a little awkwardly. But he had Barnett in the post. Roger Ruzak will come in to attempt a 33-yard field goal out of the hold of Jeff Eagle. Ruzak, one of one last week. And Ruzak's kick is on the way, and the Eagles are on the scoreboard. Three to nothing. 14 plays, eight and a half minutes. An impressive way to start on the road as the Eagles jump out. Three to nothing. The NFL on TNT is brought to you by Days End. Wake up to Days End. For reservations, contact your travel agent or call 1 800 325 2525. And by Coors Light. The silver bullet is the right beer now. The Eagles come on the road. They get on the scoreboard. And you see what time is left when they're finally going to give it up. Ruzak with a 33-yard field goal. Well, then they scored last week on the opening drive against New Orleans. They scored a touchdown. Herschel Walker on a, on a play action. They caught a pass from Cunningham. So... If you're a guy like Rosenbaum, you wait that long. What does it do to you when you're standing on the sideline? Well, you know, it drives you crazy because you always think you, you know, you like to start a game even. Now you're three down. Now you're three down. You're not starting the game even. So, but you wait and you wait and you wait, and now he's got to get a chance after this kickoff. There he is. Knocked unconscious in the third quarter last week against the Buccaneers. Edwards and Bailey back. to be Anthony Edwards. Edwards has a little alley up to the 20 and fights his way out to the 23. And so Tim Rosenbaugh, who missed the entire season with a severe knee injury, will come in and make his first appearance here in this home opener for the Cardinals. After last week, really not playing like he wanted to, being knocked unconscious, suffering a severe bruise on his throwing arm. And these guys, well, they got a free ticket. <laughs> the Cardinals finally get a snap from the line of scrimmage. One of the things they want to do, Pat, is establish a running game. Well, they're going to have to. If they don't run the ball tonight, and I'm not saying they have to run for 150 yards, but they don't get some production out of this running game, they're going to lose the football games. They also want to go after Izell's Jenkins at the corner position. Walter Reeves, a lot of movement. They're going to blow this in dead. Leon Seals, 11th hour in addition for the Buffalo Bills. Started last week and contributed. Fitting in well. Encroachment, number 97 on the defense side for the snap. Five-yard penalty, still first down. 
Here's the offensive line. Joe Bugle likes Mark May, who was with him in Washington. Louis Sharp. Lance Smith has played very solid at that right guard spot. Roll, a very nasty H-back. And Ivory Lee Brown getting his first starting call in the National Football League. Reeves in motion again. This is Ivory Lee. And he has William Thomas draped all over him. And that does not bode well for the Cardinals if that's the kind of running game they're going to have, a loss of three. Defensively, the number one defense in all categories as far as pass and run and overall. And they're missing, of course, Jerome Brown. But White is back. Simmons, Seals is filling in. And then the linebackers, well, what did Bud Carson say? He wouldn't trade him for any in the National Football League. Joiner in his first Pro Bowl. And Rich Miano, we didn't expect him to start. He's had knee problems, but he's in the starting lineup. On a second down, Ivory Lee weighs 265 pounds, used all of it, as he's able to wedge it out to the 30. William Thomas again on the stop. Joe Bugle says that Ivory Lee Brown is a 265-pounder with a wiggle. Yeah, that's that's uh, that's hard to believe, but he does have that because what he does, he he gets low and he gets underneath some people. I mean, and I think he cuts pretty well. But what, what I thought it was interesting last night too. What, what Reggie White said to us, he said, "We want to stuff the run because if we stuff the run, we set up the pass rush, which is opposite of what you usually yeah, think." That's exactly right. Third down and three. That's Prohl in motion from the shotgun. Rosenbaugh got time and the catch is made at the 35 by Johnny Bailey and that'll be a first down and obviously the Cardinals need some success after waiting so long five yard pickup on the play one of the reasons Tim Rosenball had time there is Reggie White number 92 for the Eagles is going to get double two team roll and then may they push him right by now White says I start with the bull rush early in the game but he has four different types of rushes he's got the bull the club the slip and a spin. And it all means you're right back in the face of the quarterback. <laughs> Generally. First down at the 35. Brown, and Brown getting some confidence now across the 40 to the 43-yard line. They say Brown is a terrible practice player. Said they would cut you. The bugle says when you put the silks on him on Sunday, he plays an eight-yard game. Yeah, and he got an eight-yard game there because the block of number 82 roll, who just trapped his man, and then Brown just slipped in behind that. I mean, if you get some lead blocks like that, and if there's no quick penetration from the from the Philadelphia D, that you have at least a fighting chance. Second and two. A little movement up front again. Brown dodges the first man. Other people arrive, and then he goes swarming down. Great anticipation by Seth Joyner. And, and it, and you know why? Because Seth Joyner, not only is he a terrific player, but he spends a lot of time studying formations. He spends all kinds of time in the film room, recognized the formation, the tendency there, and he's the one that disrupted the play early and allowed the middle linebacker Evans to make the tackle. And they lose yardage. Third down coming up. Four yards to go. What was it? He's the last guy to leave the building. Yeah, watching film every night. motion throws him on a third and four Prohl's got it. a first down pro there's a flag on the play as he's tackled at the 45 Ricky Prohl has good games against the Eagles his rookie year he had seven catches for 130 yards and that's a 14 yard gain if it stands the thing about Ricky Prohl is he is very quick in and out of cuts he doesn't take a lot of time to Just come out of the break. The flag there Thank is you. no penalty so they'll pick it up what you're going to see Ricky Prohl in motion here and Tim Rosenbaugh has him all the way he has him all the way but again watch how he comes out of the cut and even he, he may not have great speed but when he comes out of the cut he creates a separation to allow the quarterback to throw it past the defender and he reads those coverages so well yeah. first down at the 45 Reeves in motion, Rosenbaugh, pressure coming, dropped as he has to get rid of it. At his feet that time, coming up very quickly. 
was 92, Reggie White. That's no real surprise. Andre Waters was closest to that ball thrown into the turf. Reggie White didn't have any sacks. The left side of your screen, number 92, last week, but he had nine hurries. And sometimes you don't have to sack the quarterback. You just let him know you're there. I mean, not that you, you always remember where Reggie White is. <laughs> you better look for number 92. Yeah, but it's not just Reggie White. I mean, they've got Clyde Simmons on the other side. Seth Joyner can be a pass rusher as well. Second and ten. to get outside not a lot going there Thomas who they feel is going to be a future pro bowler could be another Seth Joyner the second year man from Texas A&M there to make the stop now William Thomas last year in his rookie season was kind of a chase guy they put him on the backside and he ran guys down from behind and made plays but he put on about 15 pounds and he still kept the speed he thinks he's like, you know, they think he's Seth Joyner Jr. I mean, they, they believe he can really be that kind of player. That's a tremendous compliment. Third and nine. Cardinals are two of two on third down thus far. Good protection. And behind Kroll. Yep. Last week in an early part of the game against Tampa Bay, Rosenbaugh had a Randall Hill wide open down the middle and overthrowing. And now Rich Camarillo, we weren't sure he would punt today, is coming in. He missed last week in the last preseason game with a thigh injury. The Pro Bowler. Well, I hope he didn't watch the uh, Giant game today where the Giants had two punts blocked early. Sakahima, a former teammate of Camarillo, back for this punt. Camarillo hits it high. Fair catch. And just across the 10, the Eagles will have the football for the second time strategically placed a 33-yard punt. So Philadelphia with a three to nothing lead. First quarter going in a hurry with 137 remaining. Gary Bender, Pat Hayden, Sun Devil Stadium in Tempe. The Eagles with the ball for the second time. The first time they got three out of it. They'll start this drive just across their own 10-yard line. Eagles doing well on first down. Is this guy, Herschel Walker, across the 15 to the 16-yard line. What they didn't want to do with Herschel, Pat, is let him get his shoulders turned up the field. Yeah, that's what Tim McDonald, the defensive strong safety for the Cardinals, said, that, that if we could keep his shoulders facing the sidelines, we could knock him back and bring him down easily. But once he gets those shoulders turned, that's where Herschel Walker gains his yards. But the reason he's got his shoulders turned upfield is the offensive line of preventing any kind of early disruption in the play. Second and four, Herschel nine carries, 31 yards. It's Herschel again, and Herschel spins a, almost to the first down. He's about a yard short, came out of that pile. Tim McDonald was down there again. McDonald was really upset with his football team last week, talking about he didn't think they had the intensity that they had in the preseason. He is the guy they like to funnel things to. He is an excellent football player. Well, in the NFL, you cannot relax on any play. And, and if you relax, you're going to have all sorts of problems, which they did against Tampa Bay last week. But Tim McDonald is a guy that's a strong safety, has to play in the center of the field and make some plays in the running game. Third and a yard. Myers in motion. Herschel Walker's got the first down as we'll come to the end of this first quarter. Walker getting a lot of carries, and all your great backs love that. They just get stronger, usually, as the game wears on. That's his 11th effort of this first quarter. And we've come to the end of the first quarter. Philadelphia with a 3 to nothing lead. The Eagles with a football for the second time when we return to the Valley of the Sun. Three to nothing, the Eagles of the lead. Let's go down to Bob Neal. Thanks, Gary Bender. On the set of the stadium show, our Fruit of the Loom halftime show will be coming up after the second quarter. It was the Desmond Dion show in Washington, D.C., and in that Buffalo and San Francisco game, more than 1,000 yards of offense. We'll have highlights from those two exciting contests, plus, of course, a lot more. And Kevin and Kenny will offer their insight into this Eagles-Cardinals game at halftime. Okay, Bob. Glad to have you with us. We'll look forward to that. In this first quarter of play, the Eagles had the football 10 minutes and 12 seconds. And they start the second quarter. On 
a first down. Cunningham going up top, going deep. The ball intended for Barnett, and Barnett's got it inside the 30 to the 26-yard line. Barnett has been their deep threat. He's had a long of 95 yards one time. This is a 51-yard completion. But a nice setup. Remember early in the first quarter, Barnett threw that. There was a little short pass, and Aeneas Williams was there and put the stop on him quickly. Well, this time they go right by Aeneas Williams. This was set up by two short throws in front of Williams in the first quarter. The little fake. Barnett goes by him because it was set up earlier. He's a strong inside receiver as well as being able to catch deep balls. I mean, Fred Barnett has made a big difference in their passing game. Out of Arkansas State, first down at the 26. Almost a mix-up, but it is. They miss the handoff. Cunningham wanted to hand off to Walker, and he could not complete the exchange, and instead gets a couple of yards scrambling forward. I think probably if you have a missed exchange, Cunningham's probably the best quarterback to have that situation. Yeah. Tell you. That is an incredibly lonely feeling. Well, the way you could run, though, you could always convert those into well, big gainers. It would be halftime by then. I would have run out the game, remaining 13 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> nice scramble. Second and eight. The Rich Cote has to be happy with the way this is, this is going right now. Rainio Cunningham has not had to do it alone. He's got plenty of help in the running game. Floyd Dixon is in the game. A handoff straight ahead to Herschel and Herschel. About a yard short of the first down, Eric Hill leading the team in tackles a year ago as well as last week there for the tackle. Now flip it over for the Cardinals. They have to be happy, very happy to only be trailing here by three points. Now, this zone defense of the Phoenix Cardinals, you must be very patient, particularly inside the 20. This defense only allowed 12, uh, 12 touchdown passes last year, forced a lot of fumbles, 37 of them to be exact, because they keep things in front of them and then try to rally to the football and cause turnovers. Third and a yard to go. Cunningham looking to Barnett. Barnett waiting for the signal. Touchdown. 17 yards. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. Remember, on, on third, the last two third and ones, they run Herschel Walker. The third third and one, they come back and throw the ball deep. Again, this is great sequencing of plays, I think, by the Eagles. And again, Barnett snatches it with the hands and then dots the eye with the feet. Cunningham has shown so many different varieties of throwing the football. Touch, long, yeah. the 51-yarders, the big play of the drive, and, of course, the 17-yard touch pass here. Ruzik down to attempt the point after. And the Philadelphia Eagles now lead it 10 to nothing. 90 yards, seven plays, took four minutes. In the first quarter, Barnett ran two short routes. He's opened up the second quarter with two long ones. The second one ends in a touchdown. I know. Let's go back to that last touchdown play. Two things to watch. Watch right here, Fred Barnett, how he gets separation on the defensive back. And then you're going to get a chance to see Randall Cunningham as he releases the ball even before the receiver's even looking. And the other thing is Barnett is the only receiver in the pattern. So you got maximum protection. They like the matchup between Barnett and the Cardinals' best defensive back in Aeneas Williams, best corner, and they still score. Yeah, that is their best corner. He had six interceptions last year. There's the drive we just talked about a moment ago. Cunningham and Barnett team for 68 of the 90 yards on that drive. Phoenix getting the ball for only the second time. You feel they've got to respond here. This game could get away from them. Absolutely. They won't return this one. Ruzik drives it deep. Anthony Edwards. And at the 20-yard line, the Cardinals will start it there. 12-31 left in this first half of play. And the Eagles with an impressive win last week over the Saints, leading here 10 to nothing. go back to this extra point last week the Eagles missed two extra points and it was low snaps by David Alexander again feet a low snap but Feagles this time does a great job of getting the ball down and placed so they can get the extra point you know that's that's really is a lost art 
And so they're able to convert that. And now it's time for tonight's GMC truck leaderboard. And what's so interesting here, last year the Eagles, number one in total passing, rushing defense. And one of those years, can you sort it out there? The purple people leaders, some of the teams through the years oh, have yeah. played so well defensively. Yeah. So the Eagles, number one in all those categories. First time since 75. I think it was even more amazing because the Eagles didn't have a consistent offense last year. I mean, they really did a lot of that on their own without a, a major offensive production behind them. They had five quarterbacks to use in the first nine games. Kroll falls down on a pass from Rosenbaugh. Well, this, this is the series, and you mentioned it. I think Tim Rosenball has to put a little smirk on his face. He is he is an interesting guy. Oh, he tripped, and I think he's laughing at him. That's, that's the kind of play, <laughs> play you come back tomorrow and you watch on tape. Even if you lose it, you give the receiver a hard time. You say, hey, come on, you're supposed to be running patterns your whole life, and you trip over the 20-yard line? Rosenball 0 for 3 after completing his first two. Rosenball backside pressure. Down he goes. That is the first sack, and Clyde Simmons will be given credit for that. That's his first sack of the year. He had nine hurries a year ago, and Rosenbaugh is down. He is down. You know, I looked at the blow he took last week, and it was surprising that he was knocked out, and now he's down again, and I don't even want to speculate on what this might be. This guy fighting back, rehabbing that severe knee injury. It's going to be from the uh, right part of the screen, number 96 on the back side. Just it's right around Smith, number 69. I think it, it just drove the weight, the weight of Clyde Simmons on his shoulder, kind of compresses those shoulders. But well, we saw that shoulder severely bruise the right upper part of his throwing arm. I don't know if that could be some of the problem. We'll wait to see. We're going to go away. Kind of a hushed crowd here at Sun Devil Stadium. 12-24 left in this first half, and the Eagles lead it 10 to nothing. Let's go back. Let's go back to the sack of Tim Rosenball. Right here is number 96, Clyde Simmons. Here's the man Smith who's supposed to block him on this particular play, and he beats him quickly. They just step out. Rosenball st trying to step up in the pocket, and then he gets driven right down into his right shoulder, and that's where the problem was. And so Chris Chandler now will come in and replace Rosenbaugh, the right shoulder, the area of difficulty. Johnny Bailey in the backfield, third and 11. Chandler, Randall Hill, he's the man who has all the speed. A first down, a 17-yard completion, and you got to give Chandler a lot of credit coming yeah. off the bench cold and completing his first pass. Yeah, third and long. I mean, you want to come in on a first and ten, you hand off a couple of times, but I'll tell you, he makes a he makes a heck of a throw in there on an in route by Randall Hill, and that's what you want to do. Rosenbaugh is going to go in the locker room. So Rosie yeah. will go into the Cardinal locker room with he, Jim Shear. He's hot, and I think he's hot at his offensive line. He was yelling at him when they took him out. So the 17-yard completion. Chandler again. He saw some brief activity last week. He's going up top the hill again, and Hill's got it. Hill goes out of bounds at the 20-yard line. <laughs> and the thrill, Hill is communicating with his audience. Overkill, Hill, maybe. <laughs> no, he's fun to watch. 44 yards. Ted Plum, the receivers coach, said, you can't believe how fast he is. Well, you know, you, you, you run different kind of routes. He ran the square in on Eric Allen, their best defensive corner for Philadelphia, and then after the square in, he comes right back and runs the go. And that ball was perfectly thrown, and that was well covered by Allen. Good concentration by Hill, and a perfectly thrown ball by Chris Chandler. He averaged over 30 yards a catch in the preseason. That was a 44-yarder. First down at the 20. Chandler to Bailey. Bailey steps inside the 20 to about the 19-yard line. Bailey was their leading rusher last week. Clyde Simmons there to make the tackle. Bailey, a plan B acquisition from the Bears. Used on third down and, of course, in the return game. He's a good receiver. He's a good runner. But the coaches worry about his blocking. If he get in a situation where he has to block a self Seth Joyner or a uh, uh, William Thomas, one of the outside linebackers, it's a mismatch. Second and nine. Oh, 
Chandler looking to the far side, broken up. Batted right back into his face. I believe it was Byron Evans who played collegiately at Arizona about 110 miles south of here. But Gary, just what I was talking about, they ran right through Johnny Bailey. Remember they said the word about Johnny Bailey, number 20? And Seth Joyner who runs right through him and Byron Evans knocks it down. There is a penalty flag at the 21 yard Outside, line. Outside, number 59 in the defense lined up in the neutral zone. Five yard penalty, repeat the down. That is Seth Joyner. The injury report, the early one on Rosenbaugh, is a sprain to the right shoulder, as you just saw a moment ago. Going in, they will take x-rays. So Joyner across the line of scrimmage, brings up now second down and about four. Bailey remains in the backfield. That's Grohl in motion. Bailey up the middle. Bailey going to be a couple of yards short of the first down, stopped at the 12-yard line. Well, it was interesting. Ricky Prohl that time came in motion and put the block on Clyde Simmons that allowed Bailey to make the inside cut. So we've seen Prohl, Prohl catch the ball on some critical situations, and you can see him come in motion. Now, so Bailey can, can run inside and not get run down from the backside. I guess you can call that a block, can't you? <laughs> well, but he gets like, in his way. Yeah, you get in the way. <laughs> Full screen. But but that prevented Clyde Simmons from collapsing the play and making the play from the backside. Third down two. Out, out. Out, out. Ernie Jones goes in motion to throw that way. Completes a Bailey at the 10. He's got a first and goal as he's knocked out of bounds at the nine. A three-yard pickup on the play. That play was set up by the cut block of Louise Sharp, the left tackle. If Louise Sharp doesn't get the defensive lineman's hands down, this is an incomplete pass. But Sharp, you just that left of your screen, number 67 in white, gets the hands down. Joyner can't get his hands up, and that led to the first down to Bailey. Joe Bugle said that Sharp is playing as well as he's ever played, the three-time pro bowler. the nine. Bailey this time can't get started. Good reaction that time by Clyde Simmons. He went to his first Pro Bowl last year for Philadelphia. Well, and deservedly so. I mean, they've had so many great players on defense, you can't send the whole team, even though, quite honestly, they may well deserve it. And Bud Carson right there, the, the defensive coordinator, has really done a sensational job with this defense. I mean, they were a good defense before, but what they did last year in Bud Carson's first year is phenomenal. He makes such good adjustments yes. during the game. He is a great game coach. He did it with the Steelers. He did it with the Rams. And now he's in with the Eagles. Second and goal just outside the 10. Chandler with time. Delivers to Pro. Touchdown, Phoenix. Chris Chandler was awesome on that drive. I mean, he threw every kind of pass. Short, deep, third down passes, first down passes. We said the Cardinals needed to respond, and they did, but not in the way you would have anticipated, losing their starting quarterback, and this guy coming in and picking it up from there. Well, Joe Bugle said they needed four big plays out of the offense. They got one to Randall Hill, the deep one, that really set up the touchdown. Greg Davis point after Chandler was 4-4 four four on that drive, 74 yards. He'll hold now for Davis. And Davis makes it a 10-7 football game. Well, Chris Chandler just drilled this ball. And you don't stay open very long in the NFL. And, and because of that, you've got to drill the ball down there by the goal line. And then... He breaks about three tackles to get the end zone. That was a terrific drive by the Cardinals. 80-yard drive, 74 of those yards from Chris Chandler, hitting 4-4. Four four. And again, I can't get over him getting off the bench. And here they come again, kicking off, breaking the huddle, and running up to the line of scrimmage. And Walker's going to bring this out. Herschel Walker. And he's dragging people with it. 
a bull-like rush out to the 29-yard line, a 33-yard return. Here, let's go back to the touchdown and see what set it up. It's right here. Butch Roll is the man who's going to come through here and take two defenders with him, and then Pro comes out underneath and scores the touchdown. So it's a well-designed play. Roll the H-backer tight end, takes the linebacker, the safety with him, and then Pro underneath catches the ball going away from the defenders and does an excellent job of getting it in the end zone. There's Roll, plan B from the Buffalo Bills. Walker and Sherman in the backfield. That's Sherman in motion. Walker, Walker, maybe a yard, the ball I think has come loose. And who's got it? No, they're gonna get it to Phoenix. The Cardinals have it. That's McDonald running with it. It'll be down at the 30, and Phoenix will have it there. And the Cardinals, who always seem to play the Eagles well, have gotten themselves back into this one. Remember last year, the Cardinals started so well in the beginning of the year with turnovers. I mean, they won their first two games, even without Rosenball, because of all the turnovers. Seeing the four wins last year, the Cardinals had plus 14, and the 12 losses, the minus 15. That was the difference. Against the Rams and Eagles in the first two. Let's watch this. That's Eric Swan, their first round draft pick of a year ago, who stripped the ball. They're going to mark it at the 31. You talk about a momentum switch when Chandler came in, then boom, your defense gets the, gets the turnover. Johnny Bailey in the backfield from the 31. Good hit near side, Ernie Jones. Makes the catch. We understand that Rich Miano, who was questionable coming into this game, re-injured his knee. We're not sure whether he'll be able to continue and come back. A seven-yard gain inside the 25. But remember that play. I think that's a setup for Izell Jenkins. You see, Miano, they threw the ball that time in front of Izell Jenkins, but they believe, the Cardinals that believe, they can beat the cornerback, number 46 for the Eagles, Izell Jenkins deep. John Booty in the game now for Miano. Chandler goes to Butch Roll, and Roll appears to have the first down inside the 20. Roll is a nasty guy. He will defend everything that the Cardinals stand for. I would not take on number 82. Well, what, what has he done tonight? You, you've seen him be a lead blocker. He's been a pass blocker. He's been a decoy in the passing game, which set up the touchdown to Ricky Prohl, and then he catches that ball. Look at Chandler, six of six. Chandler blitz Whoops. coming, and Thomas has got him. Thomas blitzing from the cornerback spot, and Chandler had no chance. You know, we, we talked about Bud Carson, the defensive coordinator for the Eagles, being a good adjustment coach. What, what he is trying to do is find a way to blitz, ultimately get the matchup that he wants, and get a free blitz like this. Number 51, right here. He's the man that's going to blitz. That's William Thomas. But see, no protection. But what Carson does is probe on defense he probes and probes pass protection and then when he finds the right scheme he blitzes the linebacker from the outside and he's got the athletes to do it loss of 10 second and 20 centers is in the game larry centers number 37 in the backfield Mixed Whoops. up there flags <laughs> going everywhere i tell you that sack you can see has all of a sudden shifted yeah. the momentum has absolutely it? The Cardinals were playing with some confidence. In the next snap, they don't get it together. Illegal procedure. And now they have 25 yards to go for a first down. Well, it, it's so difficult, I think, to get into a rhythm against this Philadelphia defense. Unlike the Phoenix defense, I think it's easier to get into a rhythm because they play zone. You know what you're going to get. They keep everything in front of you. But Philadelphia comes after you. And I think it's very difficult to stay in rhythm. Second and 25. They need to get inside the 10. Chandler, protection is there. Randall Hill, and he cannot get a John Booty defending on the play. Hill just ran out of territory to come down with that one. That's the first incomplete pass for Chris Chandler. But Hill with a terrific effort trying to come up with this catch. You know, Randall Hill impresses you because he's got tremendous speed, but he just to the ball pretty well. And that ball is just not going to get to, but in the, in the earlier deep ball, he made a nice adjustment. A lot of speed receivers 
don't adjust well, and he's also got a lot of a lot of turf on him, a lot of grass on the old face. Well, they've lowered the field here and widened the field. New turf, third down, 25. Can't take the sack. All you need is maybe five yards to get yourself back in field goal range. Candle over the middle. Pro with a nice catch at the 30. Now, that would be a 47-yard field goal. Well within the range of Davis, who last year kicked 153 yards. And that's the smart play. I mean, and this team and this Eagle defense, you're not going to get the 25 yards very often, but you don't take the sack, you don't turn the ball over, and you give Greg Davis a, uh, a chance. Well, you know, Davis did not miss from inside the 40 last year. He was 13 of 13. Last year having to punt, I should say last week, punt and place kick. And this will be a 48-yard attempt out of the hold of Chandler. The wind is at his back. Snap by Danny Fia. Davis's kick is long enough, and it's no good. At enough distance. So the effort to tie this one up goes awry, and with 4.24 left in the first half, Joe Bugles had to change quarterbacks, but thus far, it's worked very well. Moments ago, the Cardinals trying to tie it up. 48-yard field goal, and Pat, this is very, very close. You know, definitely goes outside. And so, the Eagles still lead it 10-7, to and they'll start this drive from the 30. Greg Davis, who they picked up a year ago from Atlanta by Plan B. Joe Nunn's got a piece of him, and help arrives as he's dragged out at the 31-yard line. Here's tonight's U.S. Marine Corps scoreboard as the Redskins have been very tough against the Falcons. They've never won an RFK. Saints winning, coming back strong after losing to the Eagles last week. You know, this game was 34 to nothing at one time. <laughs> yeah, they switched it when I was watching. Yeah. <laughs> and the Buccaneers. Sam Weich is 2-0. And David Shula has, doesn't even know what it's like to lose a football game yet. Second down and eight. Walker again. Cardinal Stiffen. And he maybe got back to the line of scrimmage. The guy that was there was rookie Michael Bankston, 63, their fourth round draft pick. And now there's a flag late after the play had actually concluded. And Keith Byers is really upset. He's playing tight end. That's a different territory for him. And he played it awfully well last week against New Orleans. He called a personal foul against Philadelphia. Personal foul, number 41 on the offense. 15-yard penalty. Repeat the dog. He's just kind of kicking out on Freddie Joe Nunn. They never see the first push. Oh, that's no personal foul. Yeah, that's I mean, no, that's, that? yeah, that's no personal foul. I thought he was going to load up with a right-hander no. or something. Yeah. yeah I, really. don't, uh, I don't agree with that. Second down and now 23 yards to go. Cunningham blitz from Harvey. He gets it off to Walker. Lorenzo Lynch is there as is McConnell. And the ball has come loose but I believe it's going to be down by contact well you talk about Harvey arriving in the face of Cunningham yeah and I think Tim McDonald got hurt but it started with a pass rush of Ken Harvey you have to get rid of the ball a little bit quicker the speed rush from the outside the most difficult thing for an offensive tackle to handle didn't get a lot of, and then Lorenzo Lynch the corner who plays corner like linebacker That's quite right. honestly just greased the receiver McDonald's staying in, but he's shaken up, obviously. Good tackle by Lynch. Makes it third down. Setting up the screen, and Cunningham almost sacked back there, and now Mike Jones has got him. Whoa. All of a sudden, the Cardinals are putting some heat on. 12-yard loss. They have done it with coverage on this drive and on this play and rush. Harvey, number 56, is the first one again. The quick rush on Ron Heller. 
Cunningham does a great job of just staying alive. And then Swan and Jones finishes them off. Jones had a sack last week against Tampa Bay. And Cunningham almost in that end zone when he got away from Harvey. And now the Cardinals are asking for a timeout with 2.33 left in this first half. That will be their first timeout. Let's look at the rest of the scores. Dennis Green, his first loss. He had not lost in the preseason. Lions. Chiefs look awfully good. 26-7 over the Seahawks. And the Bills and the 49ers. Look at the offense, Pat, <laughs> in that game. You know, the 49ers had a chance to win it at the end. Missed field goal. Trudeau, by the way, injured in that game. Won by the Houston Oilers. And the Rams with a win. Fourth and 35. Siegel has got to be careful. He gets him back out of the end zone. And get the safety. It's got to be a perfect snap. A snap from John Hudson. And the punt is a good one. That sure is. Johnny Baylor has it at the 44. Got the picket line set up to the 45. Bounces backwards. And the little guy stays right there. So from the 45, the Cardinals will have it trailing by three. 52-yard punt, 11-yard return. Bill Cowher is 2-0. The two youngest yeah. coaches in the National Football League have won their first two games. It's incredible. And the Broncos beating the Chargers. Stay with us at halftime for the Fruit of the Loom Halftime Report. Bob Neal, Ken Stabler, Kevin Kiley will analyze this first half of action. Ernie Johnson has all those scores and highlights back in Atlanta. Week two. And Craig Sager reports from Candlestick Park with the 49ers in that real shootout with the Bills. They'll have a report on that. There's such a thing as momentum, clearly, in football. And right now, the Cardinals have it. Sanders is in the backfield. Prol in motion. The plus is Tanner. Gets rid of it. Completes it to Jones. Ernie Jones to the 15. Jones will take it in. Touchdown, Phoenix. The man they call Indiana. Indiana Jones, 46 yards. I tell you, the, the key, I think, was a couple of things. First of all, Chandler hangs in under rush and drills the ball under duress. Good catch away from the defender. But Butch Roll, who just went by the screen, number 82, blocks not one, but two guys. And that allowed Ernie Jones to get in the end zone. So good protection, good throw there by Chandler under duress. Two blocks by Roll equals touchdown. Boy, he just snapped that one off. Man. Davis point after attempt. Davis' his kick is right down the middle. And the Cardinals, for the first time in this game, have the lead. He led them in all receiving categories a year ago. I think Roll is the man here. He's going to block a couple guys. Here's the pattern first here. But the, 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 uh, the amazing thing, Chandler under duress really hangs in there and delivers a strike. Now watch number 82 right there. He's going to pick up the block there on Jenkins, and then he's going to come back and pick up Joyner. I mean, you get a guy doing all the things that Butch Roll is doing tonight, you get a chance to win. Butch Roll, when they interviewed him about coming into Plan B, they were concerned about him. He was dressed kind of funny. He came in these silk shirts, and he had this funny bun in the back of his hair. They thought, is this guy who we think he is? He came out on the first play or the first day of practice, and he was picking a fight with everybody. Yeah, no, he, he, he comes to play. He's one of those Sunday guys. <laughs> 14 to 10. The Cardinals with the lead after that 46-yard strike. Jeff Seidner, the rookie from Hawaii, and by Sikahima, go back. Let's watch him now on this kickoff. The Cardinals are really not lining up. They just come rushing out of the huddle. Let's see if they do it again here. Watch yeah. this now. I've seen guys do onside kicks. Like that. Yeah, they've done this every time. Get a running start, I guess. Sikahima will bring it out for Philadelphia. Bye has a flag on the play as he's out to the 22-yard line. Bye doesn't have a great speed, but he has excellent vision. Seemingly knows where to take the football, that shortest distance between the two points. We have illegal use of the hands against Philadelphia. Illegal block.
Well, Philadelphia has all three timeouts remaining. They trail by four with 158. And Randall Cunningham, anytime you have him, a guy who can extend to play, you have a chance here. But it's not going to be cheap touchdowns because Phoenix plays that soft zone. You're going to have to be patient. Take the 10 to 15 yarders. Then get yourself in position. Maybe a field goal. Maybe you get the Irving, touchdown. Number 27 on the run back, on the return team. 10 yard penalty. First down. That's Saran Stacy, their first pick this year in the second round out of Alabama. Larry Pasquale, the special teams coach, discussing it with him. We'll be back with two minute warning. Cardinals with a 14 to 10 lead, striking quickly from Chris Chandler to Indiana Jones. Both quarterbacks, here's what they've done thus far. Completion percentage, very good. Yeah, you know, you expected a Randall Cunningham, one of the premier players in the league, but Chris Chandler, we didn't expect, obviously, to see him uh, tonight, unless an injury, but he came in from the very first play that Chris Chandler has come in. He has been on rhythm. He had a 17-yard pass. Rosenthal, on the other hand, was 2 of 5 for 19 before he went out with the injury. From the 10. Herschel Walker. Walker running into a lot of red and white as he gets out to about the 11. Ken Harvey was there. The defense really playing with enthusiasm, and the Cardinals now use their second timeout. They think they're still going to get this football back with a minute 50 left in the first half. Well, Pat, I want you to stand by. Okay, I'm standing. Mark Singer. Tanya Roberts, Rip Torn, and John Amos star in the action-packed fantasy adventure, The Beastmaster. Sounds like your kind of movie. Tonight after the stadium show, only here on TNT. Probably belong in the NFC East, The Beastmaster. <laughs> they called you that, didn't you? The Beastmaster <laughs> when you played? I tell you, Bugle, I was thinking about the chemistry and the, the body language a while ago. The start of this game, he was wandering around. He yeah. saw that long drive, yeah. and he probably thought, we're not going to get this thing going. Yeah, this then, is, yeah. You know, he's always been a great motivator. He's a guy that can talk, you know, talk the wallpaper off the wall, you know. He's talking with Jerry Rome right now. Now, J Rome will call the passing plays. <laughs> Big Matt crowd back there supporting us, Gary, as you see. <laughs> These guys are worried about such things as photosynthesis and all sorts of things. <laughs> <laughs> you can't even say it. What are you talking about? <laughs> Second and nine. And off to Walker again. And he is right now not getting any maneuvering room at all. And everybody jumping on the pile. Looks like 10 Cardinals were in on that stop. That's exactly right. And when you have a zone defense, everybody facing the quarterback, you have a chance. You're going to get a lot of bodies around the ball. You know, the Cardinals are asking for a timeout. They have none remaining. That's their third. So with a minute 36, we come to a third down. And you can see Herschel has not had a lot of activity since the Cardinals have started to move the ball. But what happened in this two-minute drill for the Eagles, it was the penalty on the kickoff. If they had not had the penalty, I think Rich Kotite had all sorts of opportunities available to him. But when the penalty brought them back to the 10-yard line, he said, hey, this Cardinal defense has played very well. We're not quite in sync right now. Maybe let's, let's not take a chance. Let's go down uh, maybe by four points at halftime and play the second half. What I think is interesting here, Jerry Rome's usually up in the press box. He's already come down. He's usually up calling the passing plays, talking to Bugle on the headset. He's so excited he's gone down there with Coach Bugle. Third down and six now for Philadelphia. Sikahima's in the backfield. Cunningham complete to the man we were just talking about by Sikahima. And he brings it out for a first down, an 18-yard gain to the 32-yard line. And now we have a flag back at the six-yard line. Personal foul against oh, Phoenix. Man. Harvey and Nunn were back there around Cunningham. Let's watch it. And it started with pretty good pass protection for Randall Cunningham. Can you tell he's pretty focused? He's a focused guy. He throws an easy ball to catch. And I think it was perhaps, he called it on Ken Harvey. 
That's it, number yeah. 56. Remember, that's what happened in the preseason. Ken yeah. Harvey hit uh, John Freeze of the San Diego Chargers. They actually hit him from the front and rolled into yeah. him, but this time Randall, very aware, kicked those legs out. So the penalty and the completion move it out to the 46-yard line. Over the middle to Byers. Byers is hit by David Braxton, and McDonald finishes up. Need about 10 yards to get themselves in field goal range, but still plenty of time with 118 and two timeouts remaining. And now Philadelphia is calling for a timeout. That catch by Byers, by the way, now gives him a catch in 74 yeah. straight games. Well, 62 last year alone. Well, we want to be sure you'll join us next Sunday as the Buffalo Bills. What a shootout they had today with the 49ers. They'll host the Indianapolis Colts. It all kicks off with a Silver Bullet Stadium show. 7.30 Eastern. Bob Neal and company will update you on week three of NFL action. And then be sure and join Pat and myself for the play-by-play -play story as the Colts take on the Bills next Sunday, 8 o'clock Eastern, right here on TNT. Hey, Gary, do the Colts bring back Mark Herman? You know, the man they, they cut just a week ago. They lead, he leads them to the win against Cleveland. And they cut him. Yeah. Now, uh, Trudeau gets hurt. George uh, may play next week. We don't know yet, but do you bring back Mark Herman? I think you have to. Boy, I don't know how bad the injury to Trudeau is. That's the big story. Second down and five for Philadelphia. 118 left in the half. Cunningham scrambling out. Gets away from now. The ball is loose. They scramble for it at the 45-yard line. I think Keith Byers may have retrieved the ball for Philadelphia. There he is, number 41. Cunningham had three fumbles last week on scrambles like that. And, and, and you're going to see, see Randall when he see, feels the outside rush real quickly. He just steps up. He's got the ball outside, and then it was a hustle play by Ken Harvey that forced the, hum, uh, the fumble. The Eagles going down to Huddle, and Barnett almost didn't get back to the line of scrimmage. And he's going to get this ball. Then he got back late, didn't know the play, and still makes the catch. And now they're in field goal range. He did not know what the play was called. He came back waving his hands, <laughs> indicating he was down the field, comes back and makes the catch. Well, it, you know, it's again, it's instincts. It's a feel. Some guys have it. <laughs> Fred Barnett's one of those guys. You go, you go down to the field, there's nobody covering. You just turn around, Randall Cunningham drills you the ball. We talk about Cunningham has thrown a lot of different kinds of passes tonight. But virtually all of them, whether the line shots or the long ones, are easy to catch. This will be about a 50-yard field goal if they have to kick it from here. First down. His long is 53 of his career. Reason. Cunningham, well, they don't have to worry about that because they've gotten closer as Barnett with another catch at the 21-yard line. First down. Way too much cushion. Robert Massey, the corner, is giving Fred Barnett. I mean, he, he given him 10, 15 yards. I mean, he, he's just begging Fred Barnett to run the little hook route or the out route, and that's exactly what Barnett has done twice now. 13-yard gain. Barnett has five catches. Are you ready for this? Already 106 yards. The long one was at 51 yard, and he has a touchdown as well. Cunningham on first down. Being flushed out. Being chased by Eric Swan. Also, Braxton and Cunningham ran away from him and ran for a first down just outside the 10-yard line. That knee looks pretty good, doesn't it? Yeah, you know, Ken Harvey was saying about Randall Cunningham, we talked to Harvey this week, that when Cunningham scrambles, it's like trying to tackle or chase a running back. And it really is, because watch, in the middle of your screen, number 54, the linebacker there, Braxton, takes the wrong angle. You, you just don't expect the guy, to, the quarterback, to have that speed. You take the bad angle, and Cunningham's allowed to, uh, to pick up the first down. He just keeps running away from him. And Swan runs pretty well for a big man, as does Braxton. With 24 seconds remaining. You got, you still have all kinds of time to get the ball. Two timeouts, three shots into the end zone if you want it. The two timeouts left, as mentioned. He pulls it out and tries to complete the Sikahema. Incomplete. He took a pretty good pop that time. That yeah. was the end of a string for Cunningham. He had completed nine in a row prior to that one. Inside the 20-yard line, Tim McDonald, number 46, who's ordinarily the strong safety, will play some linebacker, some middle linebacker. And they just say, hey, we want you to feel the game. 
There he is right here on the left, Tim McDonald. He's got his B, he's got a bead on the receiver. Understand where the play is, but defensive players have a feel for the game, and Tim McDonald is one of those guys for the Cardinals. Former teammates colliding there. Second down, Tim. Fires in the backfield. Alongside Cunningham. Going to the end zone, wide open, touchdown, Calvin Williams. Boy, they had to blow something there. Yeah. Williams wide open in the back of the end zone. And give Cunningham some credit for changing it up. You know, it's been Barnett, Barnett, Barnett. You give the ball to Herschel, boom, you get down there, and then you come right back and you throw it to Calvin Williams for the touchdown. A little change of pace by Cunningham and Rich Cota. Calvin Williams signed late, played only one preseason game. His timing has been up. That was a very relaxed two-minute drive, wasn't it? Yeah, it was like there uh, was no hurry at all. Rusick now to attempt the point after with 15 seconds left in the half. And his kick is good. And so the Eagles have taken the lead back. With a 17-14 lead. Let's go back to the touchdown toss. Take, take a look over here. Aeneas Williams is going to who's going to come in on the blitz. And the difference is he just gets chipped a little bit by a blocker. Otherwise, yeah, he gets pushed there by, I think, was that Davis? Anton Davis? Otherwise, he makes the sack on Randall Cunningham. And that's the difference. That little chip on the blitzer of Williams is the difference of the touchdown. Well, Aeneas Williams was blitzing, and Lofton did not get back. Steve Lofton could not recover as Aeneas was committed, number 35. And boy, I tell you, this guy saw it, and he really was able to manipulate that play. And th there is a remarkable calm, I think, about Randall Cunningham. I mean, e even though he plays with all-out abandon, yet he seems so calm all the time. And I think players around him feed off that and feel that and stay relaxed in situations like that. That is a good point, and I would imagine that's demeanor in the huddle as well as the line of scrimmage. Randall Cunningham, arguably the most exciting player in football, certainly one of them. 15 seconds left. Music will kick off. 17-14 the Eagles. These two teams get together. It's usually exciting, and we certainly haven't been disappointed tonight. Bob Neal and his troops getting ready for our stadium show at halftime. Be sure and stay with us. Edwards and Bailey go back deep for Phoenix. Anthony Edwards backing up, and he won't bring it out, so the Cardinals will start from the 20-yard line. Take another look at this touchdown. I mean, you can count one, two, three, and really a half a player here. This is the blitzer. Here's the receiver. But watch how these three guys all go for the short guy, and that allows Calvin Williams right there in the slot to break the end zone. If you stop it right there, you got all these guys. Here's the receiver who's going to score back here. I've got him. You got him. Nobody yeah. got him, right? I got him. You take him. So Chandler, who has come in this game under dire circumstances and performed so well, brings him out to the 20-yard line. And they're just going to kill the remaining time. I think it's the worst playing football <laughs> at home, particularly at home, <laughs> killing the clock at halftime. You practice that a long time, don't you, going to a knee? Yeah. It's a great play at the end of the game, but you know you win the game, but not <laughs> going into halftime. Rich Kotite knows he has a battle on his hands. His team leads it by 3, 17-14. Stay with us now for the Fruit of the Loom halftime show coming up. The NFL on TNT is brought to you by Bud Dry. For a beer that's refreshingly different, try Bud Dry. And by Pennzoil, America's number one selling motor oil. Sun Devil Stadium, Tempe, Arizona. 17-14, the Eagles with the lead. This game looked like Philadelphia was very much in control. They started out driving effectively. They had the ball over 10 minutes in that first quarter. And then, Pat, Cardinals started to turn things around. Yeah, in that second quarter. But, you know, the, the, the Cardinals came in with little margin for error, error in this game. And you see what they've done. They've only had three penalties. They've had no turnovers. 
Uh, the surprising thing to me, quite honestly, with only 10 rushing yards, they only trail by uh, three points. So, uh, you know, they, they, they didn't make many mistakes in the first half, and that's why we have a, a close ball game. They had seven penalties last week against Tampa yeah. Bay. Now, one thing the Cardinals have to guard against is a letdown at the start of the second half. Last year, Joe Bugle's team had somebody score on him in the initial possession of the second half in eight games, and it happened last week in Tampa where the Bucks drove the ball 80 yards. So they need to start well. There is the yeah. graphic to support what I was saying. And for some reason, they come out of that yeah. locker room and they haven't had the emotion. Well, it starts right now. This is, I think this is a very emotional Phoenix team right now. They trail by three points. They lose their quarterback. It, it, and they only rush for 10 yards, so they have to feel real good. But it's incumbent upon Chris Chandler and his offensive line to try to get some production out of that running game and then make something happen and, and don't give Philadelphia the ball with a three and out. Pat, we have an update on Rosenbaugh. Separated right shoulder, so obviously he will not return. Ruzik kicking off. Edwards is back deep along with Bailey, and they will not bring this one up as it'll come out to the 20-yard line. So Chris Chandler's the man. Now, if something would happen to him, they have rookie Tony Saka from Penn State. In fact, last week, people yeah. got him in the game just in case they might have to go to yeah, it. it, it good foresight by Joe Bugle, quite honestly. Not the kind of foresight he wants. They love this guy. They think he has a terrific future. He was their first pick in the second round. They didn't have a first round this year because they gave it up for Randall Hill a year ago to the Miami Dolphins. If Bugle could really script this, he'd like a, he'd love a methodical two or three type of first down drive. Even if they didn't score, just two or three first downs. start out with Ivory Lee Brown who started this game and that's a pretty good start to the second half as he fires out close to seven yards on the play bring up a second down Andre Waters there to make the stop you know Gary we've talked about Butch roll a lot tonight because he's really behind the scenes he has set up a lot of things again that time it was that wham block you know the the guy going in motion the h-back going in motion you double down or trap the, the tackle and that allowed Ivory Brown to pick up about uh, seven yards. Second down and three now for Phoenix. Brown is in the backfield. Chandler to throw. Gets it over the middle. The middle screen to Brown. And Brown fighting for the first down. He's not going to get it. A lot of congestion when that ball got there. <laughs> yeah. There was no running room at all. William Thomas, number 51 right there, kind of really disrupted that screen, screen from uh, the very get-go. I mean... They're supposed on screens. You're supposed to have lots of space to run, but there wasn't much space there because William Thomas was was covering that space. <laughs> so they're a yard short of the first down. Thomas has made a lot of plays in this game. Yeah, he has. He's been made plays at the point of attack, and he's chased plays from behind. Third down and a yard to go. Brown in the backfield. Eric Ware into the slot. Trying to get it. Can he get it? They only had 10 yards rushing in the first half, and that's been a problem trying to run the football. Let's see where they mark it. He got it by the mark, and that's a big first down yes, for the it Cardinals. Is. The Cardinals just could not run the football last year. They couldn't stop the run, and they couldn't run the ball well, themselves. They haven't run it well yet this year. It's hard to imagine 260 pound, 65 pound back squeaking through a little crack, but that's just what Ivy Lee Brown did here. Yeah, there he goes. Yeah, it's pretty hard to squeak when you're 265. <laughs> you're right. First down just across the 30. The Cardinals get that one first down, yeah. which is important. They didn't have the three and out. That was a critical thing. Chandler double pumping. And that one's almost intercepted. Instead, it's caught by Ivory Lee Brown. That was one of those near disasters. And Brown somehow picked up five yards. Seth Joyner then over to make the tackle. That was a near interception. Well, you know, this franchise needs some luck, quite honestly. They've had some, some tough moments, and this is, uh, this is some of that luck. We're trying to get it to Randall Hill deep. Didn't get much on that ball. Seth Joyner's going to make a lot, of a, lot, a lot of plays. Actually, that wasn't as close as I thought it was. But Brown had the inside route, and he picks up five. Well, we've got a lightning storm to the south of here right now. Never rains in Arizona, so don't worry about it. <laughs> Second and five. Down in the backfield. They're a little cut back, and the green shirts are there, led by Tommy Jeter. Now, he is a rookie out of Texas. 
Byron Evans, the middle linebacker for this excellent defense of the Eagles. Byron Evans, number 56, the middle linebacker, misses the play but disrupts it. And again, sometimes when you have a lot of good defensive players around you, even if you don't make the play, you disrupt the, the, disrupt the play enough so that your rookie, Tommy Jeter, can make it and Clyde Simmons can come in and help. They lost two yards on the play, third down and seven coming up. Larry centers in the backfield. Chandler on third and seven. On target and then drop. Ricky Pro was trying to make a move to get to the first down marker and he forgot to catch the football. You don't see that from number 87 very often, the sure hands. That is a big drop because the Cardinals now having to get rid of the football. They needed to keep this going. Instead, now Camarillo to punt. Seidner, the rookie from Hawaii, who everyone is ranting and raving about, goes back. Camarillo hits it high. Seidner coming up. The fair catch will be made at the 29-yard line. So Philadelphia will set it up there. 38-yard punt. No return. 11-0-1 to go in this third quarter. So the Cardinals get one first down and then short circuit on the second on the drop pass. The Eagles with their first opportunity in the... I'm this telecast is presented by authority of the National Football League and is intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the express written consent of the Phoenix Cardinals and the National Football League is prohibited. Gary Bender, Pat Hayden at the 29-yard line. Philadelphia has the football for the first time in the second half. They lead it 17-14. Herschel Walker is the running back behind Randall Cunningham. Herschel will get the opportunity. First soft tackle running over people to 45. He's to the 49-yard line. Freddie Joe Nunn finally wrestles him down a 20-yard run by the former Heisman Trophy winner from Georgia. Yeah, Rich Kotite last night said, we got to run over the right side over Antone Davis and Eric Floyd. And if you just lock some guys up, Floyd, number 61, gets a block. Antone Davis, number 78, he gets a block. And that allowed Herschel Walker to kind of pick his way. If you use Herschel Walker in the right way, you design three or four plays for him specifically, and that's what Rich Kotite has done, and you keep giving it to him, sooner or later he's going to make a play like that. Boy, did they control the line of scrimmage there. 20-yard run. Busted play. Cunningham being chased by Harvey. Harvey's got it. That's twice now. They've had a mix-up on the exchange, and Cunningham this time, still trying to get something out of it, may have gotten back to the line of scrimmage. It's Keith Byers, number 41. Uh, uh, Byers didn't expect Harvey, uh, the play to be outside, so that is not Keith Byers' fault. He, that was supposed to be an inside run, and because of the miscommunication on the handoff, it looks like uh, Byers missed a block when he didn't. Keith Byers will love you for saying that. No, it's, it's true, though. <laughs> Gained about a yard, second down and nine for the 50-yard line. Side to Barnett. Barnett makes the catch and knocked out of bounds. He's been the main man as far as Cunningham's concerned. Let's go back to the first quarter. Remember, Randall Cunningham came out and threw two little hook routes to Barnett on the right side against Aeneas Williams in the first quarter. In the second quarter, he came back and threw two deep balls to Barnett against Williams. Third quarter comes right back, starting with the short passes, and maybe he's going to set up the deep throw to Barnett for later on. Six-yard pickup to the 44-yard line. Third and three for Kotite and the Eagles. This is definitely a passing down, I think, here for the, for the uh, uh, Eagles, unless Randall Cunningham can run a draw. Motion is Byers. Cunningham with a deep drop. He is buried. Eric Swan, Freddie Joe Nunn. We're there first, and Cunningham disappeared. Yeah, there were three different white guys, white jerseys there. Mike Jones being the other guy. Is, remember we said early on, he said you don't stay blocked? 
Fires right there at waving his arm uh, up, and he was open. He would have picked up perhaps the first down. But the, the Cardinal defensive linemen are not staying blocked. They're initially getting hit, but they're throwing guys away and making plays. So it was Swan there first. Eagles to punt away. Johnny Bailey calling for the fair catch and then lets it hit. It bounces back up the field and Seidner down there to down it at the eight yard line. 47 yard punt. So the Cardinals hold defensively but start deep in their own territory. The Cardinals needed that success as they've had trouble starting the second half in the past. Tim Rosenbaugh has had a tough regular season. Last week knocked out in the third quarter. Tonight suffering a separated right shoulder. Of course, missing all of last year with that severely damaged knee. And you can have degrees of separated shoulders. I mean, you could, you could see that we'd be back in three weeks or it might take six or seven. From the eighth now, the Cardinals have a trailing by three. Ivory Lee Brown, a little spin move, gets him maybe two yards. Reggie White was there to make the stop. This is another important series for the Phoenix offense. Phoenix defense did their job just a moment ago, but with the Cardinals trailing by three points, seven minutes and 50 seconds remaining in the third quarter, this is another one of those situations you can't have a three and out and give Randall Cunningham and the Eagle offense an opportunity to, to uh, increase the margin. So a first down is critical right here for Phoenix. Larry Centers has come into the backfield. They use his posse offense with three wideouts. Second and nine. Chandler from the goal line. Will lose Byron Evans and gets out to the 10. So Chandler, a pretty nifty little move there, avoiding a loss and picking up another yard on the play. Where it'll come to third down and still eight yards to go. That's the hit list or the hit chart, as Joe Bugle calls it. Looking down and trying to figure out what to call next. One of the things the Eagle defensive backs do a terrific job of is jamming receivers coming off the line of scrimmage. Pro is really getting jammed right there at the line of scrimmage. It has no chance to get into, that's called the double jam, the double dip. No chance to get open. Third and eight. Chandler feeling the pressure, gets rid of it. He completes it to Butch Roll, and Roll drags him to a first down. <laughs> Mr. Toughness. <laughs> yeah. I'll tell you, another guy was pretty tough is Chris Chandler. Because Chris Chandler is hanging in the pocket. And you know you're going to get punished, but he's incredibly patient back there. I mean, he's got a couple of guys there in his face. You're going to see Golduck number 90 in his face. Go Reggie White comes from the outside. You know you're going to take a shot, but you have the courage and the heart to hang in there, come up with a big play. And that was one of them. And the, the Cardinals needed four. By my count, that's at least three the Cardinals have had in the passing game. First down on the 12-yard completion. Chandler again going up top. Ten of a roll. Some bodies bouncing around at the 38-yard line. Andre Waters was one of those over there. Crowd feeling that roll was interfered with. Yeah, and I think they thought it was on Seth Joyner, the linebacker. Joyner just so active out there, moving around, making calls. He was uh, in the Pro Bowl. One magazine picked him the NFC Defensive Player of the Year. Here's the play. Joyner's got his hand on him. He didn't really push him. Tripped him, but he had his head turned around. I don't, I don't think that's interference. I don't think that's interference. Second and 10. Centers is in the backfield again. Pro will go in motion. Booty is blitzing. Hand off to Larry Centers. He posts out of there. He's to the 35, the 40. He's to the midfield side. <laughs> 28 yards. They were blitzing a corner. Centers went the other way. And Larry Centers, who really hasn't done all that much offensively, makes a big run. Well, if you have a blitz situation and you can get through the first wave, you can make some things happen because once you get through the first wave, you're in the defensive backfield. And then you make a guy miss like he did there at Andre Waters, and all of a sudden you picked up a big yards for first down. Yeah, he's got to act like he's he's done this before. I thought you only demonstrated in the end zone. <laughs> yeah. First down now at the 50-yard line. Again, Pro will come in motion. Five minutes to go in the third. 
Chandler going up top, going deep. The ball intended on the far side for Jones. Oh. Booty defending on the play. Should have been picked off. Booty oh. playing, of course, for Miano as well as Wes Hopkins, who are slowed yeah. by injury. Yeah, Booty's or ordinarily the nickelback, and so Bud Carson's had to adjust. He's got Booty now playing safety. His nickelback changes. But this, this should have been an easy, mm. easy interception. And watch Joyner, how he runs right through a, a back. You cannot block Seth Joyner Ooh. with a back. Oh, man. That's the third time he's run through a back on him. You have got to get a big body in him, a guard, a tackle. And Bud Carson's looking for matchups like that. Joyner against the back. In wrestling, that would have been a pin, wouldn't it? Second down. Ten yards to go. Quarterback draw. And Chandler finds a running lane. Skims and slides his way about a yard short of the first down. Chandler showing the ability to run with this football. I love the skim and slide. Well, yeah, that's, well. That's, yeah. <laughs> the slide, anyway. <laughs> okay, there you go. Going to be just short, it appears, of the first down by a yard. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, Pat, you don't get a lot of repetitions during the week when you don't know you're going to play. You think that's going to affect your game. But Chandler's come off the bench, and he looks like he was the guy that was supposed to start this game in the first place. And, and that's a unique ability of, of the productive backup quarterbacks. So there were a number of them last year in the NFL. Third and yard. Time Hill, he cannot make the connection. Pretty good pressure coming up the middle on number 17, and Seth Joyner was around all of that. Yeah, in inside blitz by number 59, Seth Joyner. Again, some guys time it perfectly too, which he did. He just kind of falls off a couple of bodies, prevents himself from getting blocked, leaves his uh, calling card, and moves on. Absolutely. Camarillo into punt. <laughs> On a fourth and one, Sikahima is back at the 10. Danny Villa with the snap. Camarillo trying to keep it in the field of play. Cardinals are down there, and Sikahima makes the fair catch at the 12-yard line. 29-yard punt. The Eagles will have it again. They lead it 17-14. Just inside, four minutes to go in the third quarter. Well, Pat, they always say, be ready to be the quarterback. And Chris Chandler certainly is evidence of that. He's come in. He's acquitted himself very well. And this football team, the Cardinals, have hung in here in the third quarter, which in the past has been a real problem. You know, I've really been amazed at with Chris Chandler because I think it's the most difficult thing for not only starting quarterbacks, but particularly for backup quarterbacks, is really to, A, get in the rhythm of the game quickly, and B, hang in the pocket under some duress and pressure. And Chris Chandler has done both those things. Remember, they wanted those four big plays in the passing game. They've got three so far. And the Cardinals continue to put some heat on Cunningham. That'll be big as this third quarter continues to unfold. That was one of the things that uh, the Eagles talked about was Nunn and Harvey, those outside linebackers, how quick, how agile they are. They thought they were a lot like the Pat Swillings of the Saints a week ago. Absolutely. Now flip it over. Philadelphia right now needs some production out of Herschel Walker in the running game. Need a first down. And here comes Herschel. Out across the 15 to the 16-yard line, Tyrone Stowe and Jeff Faulkner there to make the tackle. He now has carried the ball, Pat, 17 times for 72 yards. What is it, about 18, 19 carries yeah. is where they really get it yeah. together? You know, he, he really is amazing because it, with all his speed, which has been well documented, he's, he's never been an elusive back like, say, a Barry Sanders or Emmitt Smith. But if you give him the ball enough times, so he'll give you three yards here, three yards here, but he can always give you 70. Second and six. And off comes to Herschel again. And Walker has a first down out to the 30. Well, one of the coaches said last night, he says, he runs what it looks like four yards, but it's actually seven yards. 13-yard yeah. yeah. run there. A little kind of a missed exchange there, too, but Ron Heller, number 73, and Shad, 79, both of them. Shad picks up a nice block. Heller picks up a block downfield. And so now to 29, a first down for Philadelphia. 17-14, the Eagles of the lead. Cunningham going deep. Barnett is down here. He has a Neil Williams beat, and he's going to take it in for the touchdown. 
I love Fred Barnett. 71 yards for Fred Barnett, and the Eagles strike. I, I, I love Fred Barnett. I mean, again, he just snatches that ball. He, he has some very strong hands. He snatches it, and he gives you the straight arm. I mean, he, he gave Aeneas Williams a straight arm for the last 15 yards. And a perfectly thrown ball, again, the deep ball by Randall Cunningham. His second touchdown catch, seven catches tonight, 183 yards, and we're still in the third quarter. Oh, oh look yes. at this. The face mask. Actually, he is actually face masking. <laughs> I thought it was a straight arm, but he got the straight arm right in the face mask for 15 yards. Was it still a good And so the kick makes it a 10-point lead for Philadelphia. So 183 yards, a career best for Barnett. And just look at this. I don't think I've ever seen somebody reach back and hit somebody in the face mask. Remember like the that. short pass earlier on? It set up the deep one, and then it's an in-your-face. <laughs> Literally. Don't re Well, the Eagles have gotten some big plays and some long drives, and Fred Barnett with two touchdown catches just a moment ago, 71 yards. You know, the Eagles tonight remind me a lot of the Washington Redskins. They give you power with Herschel Walker and finesse and the deep ball with Fred Barnett. I am really impressed with how they have mixed it up, distributed yeah. their plays, set up that long touchdown toss just a moment ago. Is it now kicking off? just haven't had a chance to return and they might have here had Bailey not had trouble finding the handle and they'll bring it out to the 20. Gary I think in the NFL what in particular tonight what Philadelphia has done is a sensational job of setting up plays now in the, earlier in the third quarter Randall Cunningham threw a little out route here a short pass to Barnett and you see how close the defense was by uh, Aeneas Williams well the people upstairs are saying if he's playing that close you got to go up top they did it twice in the first half and they come right back in the third quarter and do it. So one play sets up the other, and that's good offense. Aeneas Williams had a long night because Barnett has burned him twice for touchdowns. New running back, Johnny Johnson, who was activated this week, has come to the backfield. And here's a pass complete to Randall Hill, a flag coming as Hill is close to the first down. So Johnny Johnson making his first appearance. He was a Pro Bowler in 1990. goes against Philadelphia. Defensive pass interference, number 21. The pass was caught. The penalty is declined. First down. That was Eric Allen, who played collegiately here at Arizona State. You know, but what I like about this play, you have Randall Hill, a speed receiver, running a slant route on the move. He catches it. Maybe something happens. He breaks some break some uh, tackles and you score but uh, that's the kind of play you need when you're down by 14 points and two minutes remaining in the third quarter second fastest man in the NFL behind Alexander Wright Chandler going deep to the other side this time intended for Ricky Prohl but good coverage that time by Philadelphia well that's the matchup they wanted they wanted to throw the ball deep on Jenkins remember we said at the very beginning of this broadcast they felt they could beat Izell Jenkins deep but Jenkins was not fooled that time and it was good defense they feel he's not playing with a lot of confidence right now he's got great straight ahead speed but sometimes doesn't change yeah. direction all that well yeah they call it in line speed but remember because Eric Allen on the other side is such a good corner people are going to try to pick on Izell Jenkins second down 10 now from the 30 yard line the Cardinals having some problems getting this play called Six seconds on the play clock. This handled by Chandler, retrieves it, and he's going to be retrieved and slammed down by Clyde Simmons. Simmons, like a sack of potatoes, slammed him down, and Chandler getting up a little groggy. Yeah. Well, th this is not the offensive lineman's fault. You know, it goes down as a sack, but uh, Chris Chandler just mishandled this one. I don't know whether it bounced off his uh, thigh 
Well, you know what? I actually think the back going through the line knocked it out of his hands. I think the back going through the line of scrimmage knocked it out of Chandler's hands. Loss back to the 20, a loss of 11, third and 21. Simmons having a strong game, as anticipated. Chandler again, Simmons putting some heat on. He throws, he's hit, the ball not quite catchable. Jones lunging for it at the 40 as, again, Chandler took some punishment on that play. Checking to see if they had ear holes in the right place. <laughs> You know, when, the, when, the, when you're looking out of the ear hole, you know you have some problems. <laughs> Camarillo now to punt from the five-yard line. This time they send back twin people, Seidner and Sikahema, for this punt. Twin safeties back at the 35. <laughs> Camarillo, beautiful punt. And we're going to have a penalty here. They were trying to catch the ball. Interference with the fair catch as Seidner was the guy who was trying to make the fair catch. And a collision from Steve Lofton, 28. He just ran over him. Did he call fair catch? No, I don't know. He actually he called a fair catch. He and Sikahima were both running over there. He, he, the receiver must have an opportunity to catch the ball, but he didn't have the arm up for the fair catch. No, he did not. But you still have a, to have a chance to catch the football regardless, and that's what's being discussed right now. So they will assess the penalty against Phoenix. Hmm. Yep. So the minute seven left in this third quarter, the Eagles will get an advantage here. Interference with the opportunity to catch a punt. 15 yard penalty from the spot of the fall. First down. So they're all the way to the midfield strike. Pete Rodriguez, the special teams coach of the Cardinals, he doesn't agree. 24 14, Philadelphia. TNT presents Westerns All Week. The week gets started tomorrow with Hondo at 2 o'clock p.m., followed by Al Jennings of Oklahoma at 3. Then Jesse James versus the Dolphins at 4.35 p.m. It's Westerns All Week only on TNT. How about Beastmaster meets Hondo? That's what I want. <laughs> Got your cowboy boots on? Let's look at this hey, play. Let's go back because I think what happened on this play, the advice Sikahema, number 22, right there is going to block Lofton into Seidner. Hmm. So that should not have been a penalty because he was blocked into the receiver. So it ends up being a 15-yard penalty to the 50-yard line. Cunningham going for all of it. Barnett again. Barnett is there. And it is going to be broken up. Incomplete. Excellent play by Robert Massey. That ball was absolutely being contested for all the way across the goal line and eventually number 40 pulled it out of there you know randall cunningham is throwing the ball as accurately deep deep balls as anybody you've seen i mean he winds up and lets this thing happen now on the other end massey does a great job because we've talked about barnett's strong hands pretty good spiral there No, he does not have possession. He does not have possession. Good call by the official and great defense by Massey. Cunningham, 15 of 19, 244 yards. Pitches to Walker. Walker trying to get the corner. He won't. There's a case. He didn't get the shoulders up the field. Lorenzo Lynch, who will hit you, came up. You were talking about he plays cornerback like a linebacker. Massey's the better cover guy. Lynch is the better run support guy. And so they use Massey on the pass, and here they come back with Lynch. Well, that, that's, that's good defense by Fritz Shermer, the defensive coordinator for the Cardinals. And what you like in that zone defense is you get Lorenzo Lynch, a corner, up close to the line of scrimmage so he can make plays like that. Now, the, with the Cardinals trailing by 10 points here, this becomes a very important down for the Cardinal defense. They've got to stop Randall Cunningham. A loss of a yard, third and 11. Pressure coming. Cunningham trying to scramble out, and he's going to be buried for a loss inside the 45. The ball may have come loose again. They're trying to sort it out with three seconds left, and the Cardinals have it.
Freddy Joe Nunn comes up with it. Let's watch it. Well, last week, Randall Cunningham had three fumbles with some pressure on the outside by the New Orleans Saints. This time, he runs right into his own man, Shad, number 79. The ball comes loose, but it started with outside pressure on the corner, then good coverage, and then he runs into his own guy and fumbles the ball. It was Harvey that really was starting to collapse things yeah. from that backside, and Cunningham sensed that and went forward, and the Eagles now with their second turnover. And the Cardinals, when they beat the Eagles, it's usually that kind yeah. of a situation. Well, the that, Eagles turn it over. Last week, the Eagles had four turnovers and missed two extra points and still found a way to win. Cardinals have it at the 44 of Philadelphia. Chandler dumps it off to Johnny Bailey. The open field move doesn't get him much. Dragging him down was William Thomas, not letting him get up the field. Gary, I... That's right. We'll let you conclude okay. that thought in a moment. We please do. We <laughs> come to the. Game, would you? <laughs> we've played three quarters here in Tempe. A ten-point lead. Be sure to stay with us at the conclusion of tonight's game. Pat and I will pick tonight's McDonald's Player of the Game. We've got a lot of candidates now, Pat. As you were getting ready to say, <laughs> at hey, the end of the third quarter. What a great memory. I love that. Uh, thanks for bringing me back in. But I, I was going to say, there is no team in the National Football League, I think, that handles turnovers better than Bud Carson's Philadelphia Eagle defense. These guys play with such confidence and such arrogance. Turnovers don't bother this defense as, as, as much as they do most teams in the NFL. They feel they can win games on defense, and they will win games on defense. The Cardinals have the football at the 44. Which roll comes in motion. Chandler, quarterback draw, and doesn't get out of there because Mike Golick, so smart, was there, read it, and dropped it. Golick's quite a story. Leon Seals came in so late in the trade from Buffalo, he didn't have the terminology down. So Golick learned the Bills' defensive calls and then interpreted for Leon Seals. What do you call it, a Buffaloology or something? I don't know. Don't ask. Well, he was, you know, on, on, before the tragic death of Jerome Brown, Mike Golick was the swing tackle. They used to rotate him in. Now he's starting and playing every down, and he's played pretty well tonight. Third and 12 now for the Cardinals. Just underway, fourth quarter. Pro comes in motion. Chandler double pumping. He's got the ball complete to Johnny Bailey, makes a nice spin move, and he is at the 37-yard line. Three, maybe four yards short of the first down. Bailey is a lot to get hauled in in that open field. Not very big, but outstanding player coming out of college at Texas A&I. Okay, now you have fourth and three or four. Yep. Oh, I can't, yeah. He's down you by... know what's happening because you can listen to the crowd. Oh, boy. Yeah, I think you had to go for it here. Camarillo is coming in. So Joe Bugle elects to punt away on fourth down. It's, it's closer to four than it is three yards. Yeah, but you're down by ten points. And, and Randall Cunningham is hot right now, and so is Fred Barnett. Bicek Hamlet goes back. Camarillo from the 47. Don't go in the end zone. Down there is Anthony Edwards. He's going to keep it from happening. And they're going to down that ball just outside the five. Very well done by the special teams. Bugle said he felt that they had equal special teams with the Eagles, that that would be probably a standoff. The Eagles lead it by 10. Woodson in Atlanta will head back to Sun Devil Stadium in just a second. First, the Isuzu play of the day. You've seen it before. You're going to see it again, folks. It was the play to see Brian Mitchell of the Redskins with the lateral to Desmond Howard and the Heisman Trophy winner with his first NFL touchdown as the Redskins beat the Falcons. That's the Isuzu play of the day. Now let's go back to the Eagles and Cardinals. You know, sometimes plays like uh, you're going to see from Seth Joyner, number 59, even though it's not your responsibility, when you have good team defense, you make the play. Now that ball was around the left flat, but it was Seth Joyner, number 59, who showed his strength by just dragging Johnny Bailey down. Here he is, number 59. He's got the flat, the hook zone over here on the left. But when things are going right and you're playing good de team defense, sometimes you help your teammates, and Joyner did right there. And that made it a fourth down. The Eagles starting with their poorest field position of the night, but they've had some long drives. We'll document that in a moment. Hand off to Walker. Walker outside, and Walker very close to the first down as he runs over somebody. 
Robert Massey was over there. We started to say, after that 11-yard run, the Eagles have had drives of 90, 90, and 88 yards. So this is kind of what they like. But this is going to come back. We have a penalty flag. They like these long drives. They like to start deep in their own territory. Well, you know, but, but think about their division. I mean, holding number 83 on the offense, half the distance to the goal line, still first down. Take another look at that. He got a Herschel Walker got a big block by Mike Shad, number 79. And he gets those shoulders when he gets the shoulders turned, mm. he can make some things happen. Wow, like a car wheels coming off the yeah. ground, wasn't it? He just kept going. Now, first and 13 after the penalty from the three yard line. Williams in motion. Herschel trying to wedge it out of there, close to the five. You know, Herschel, when you look at Herschel, he kind of reminds you of a, like a cartoon bulldog. You know, he's got this huge, tremendous chest, and he takes these tiny little steps with his feet, but then he keeps them going, keeps the feet going the whole time, and sooner or later he breaks through and makes a play. You see Herschel looking, looking up the scoreboard? You see more and more NFL players doing that, watching replays during the course of a game. Second down and 11 from the five. Again, Walker out to the 10, runs over Zordich and heads up the field to the 15-yard line. Now, where are they going to mark this? He needed to get to the 16 for a first down. 10-yard run. He's now at 96 yards for the night. All good running backs see things. He's a yard short of the first down. It'll be third and a yard. Talk about good running backs. It starts with a vision, and then you get a feel and then it ends with power. Herschel Walker is running with as much power, quite honestly, tonight, Gary, as I have ever seen him, really, since his days at Georgia. He said this is a new life for him. Look at this. He's outrushed the entire Cardinal team. Third in a yard. Think 34 might get this one? <laughs> and it wasn't easy as he's off the right side. He made it, though. And that's the third, third and short that Herschel Walker has converted. We said he's the best third down, uh, third and short back in the league. He's a great receiver. You know, lots of people get caught up in the things that he can't do, but there's a lot of things that Herschel Walker can do. Tim McDonald getting up very slowly for the Cardinals. And uh, looks like they're gonna bring the sticks in to be sure this is a first down. 10.58 left in the game. Gosh, I hope I'm right after going. <laughs> You're up here a long <laughs> ways. <laughs> How they did. Oh, you had about almost Never the whole length of a football. Line. And so they come out of a very precarious situation. They were inside the five at the three. They now have a first down at the 16. Well, if, if this, if Phoenix is going to win this game and they trail by 10 with a little under 11 minutes to play, and this, this defense has to cause their third turnover of the evening. It's the only way they're going to win this game. Cunningham to Walker again, and Herschel out to the 20-yard line. Nothing fancy right now. Mike Jones there to make the stop. He now has gone over the century mark for the second week. 101 yards on 23 carries. This is, I think, very interesting. That surprises me a little bit. Yeah. Second time in his seven-year career with back-to-back 100-yard -back games. Well, you know, it was interesting. When he started off, then we started off with Minnesota, his very first game there. He had, had a 148, game, 100, yeah, I think. Came back and didn't have it the next week. Well, he uh, certainly has proven his worth to the Eagles tonight again. Well, he's won his teammates over. Second down and six. 34 will come out straight at the Cardinals, out to the 25. Oh, this is tiring for a defense. Have somebody keep hammering at you. And they're killing the time with 943. But you can't control the clock and run the ball like the Eagles are unless your offensive line are staying on their blocks. It's one thing to get your hat on a defender, which this Eagle offensive line is doing. It's another to maintain those blocks, and that's what they've done. On that right side, we'll look at it here. Number 90, Stowe, the middle linebacker, gets the old tripping, gets the old leg out. 
No one saw that. Third down in the yard. I started to talk about the right side as Walker hammers forward for another first down. But I started to say that right side. Now we got a fight breaking out. But that right side of Floyd and Davis between them. Well, one of them's 325 pounds. The other's 310. So that's over 600 pounds lined up on the right side of that offensive line. You know, and, and I think when you find a good offensive line, you find a good offense. Now, the Eagle offensive line is not yet a dominating line, and Rich Kotite says, hey, I want my offensive line to play like my defensive line. I want them to dominate. And we said, when you play in the NFC East, if you don't run and you can't stop the run, you can't win. He hired a new offensive line coach, Bill Muir, coming over from Indianapolis. And the offensive line people like the fact that everything is black and white. There are no gray areas in the blocking assignments. Cunningham to Barnett. And Barnett dragged down by Lynch. I'll tell you who's happy that happened is Aeneas Williams. <laughs> He's, Barnett's been working on poor Aeneas Williams all night. Uh, Barnett gets hurt. And now he comes back and works on Lynch for a change. The happiest guy when, on, the, on the field when Barnett ran out to that side was Williams. Well, that's that short pass again. If it's there, he takes it. When you come up and cover it, he blows by it. I think he went out with an injury, too. He's probably worn out. He has eight catches for 193 yards and two touchdowns. You know, Aeneas Williams is not on the field right now. They put Massey in. Massey's now playing the corner after he got burned twice. Massey and Lynch are the corners. Walker again. Walker doesn't go very far, but they're just doing exactly what they want to do. They're grinding the clock down, keeping the football. Methodical. And the Cardinals, yeah, with Hill and Swan on the tackle there. You know, there he is. There's Aeneas Williams. But you just called Eric Swan's number, number 98 for the Phoenix Cardinals. He, he, he's a guy that is played pretty well. There he is. Now, he was supposed to be a third down guy, but now, right now, in this part of the game, he is playing every down, and he has made some stops, even in the running game. This drive started at the 13-25 mark. Now, inside seven minutes left. Cunningham being flushed out, and he'll be grounded for about a yard gain on the play by Freddie Joe Nunn. Yep. You mentioned Swan. They just need some maturity from him. It looks like he's getting better. He's had to learn to play through the nicks and bumps and bruises, which he didn't do in college. He didn't play college football. Yeah, but watch the pass rush here. This is against Anton Davis. Two 300-pounders going at one another. He's getting clubbed by Davis. Now, <laughs> that should have been a penalty, quite honestly, on Anton Davis, because he is clubbing Swan right to the head. Third down and eight. the near side this catch is made by floyd dixon who we haven't called tonight and dixon has a first down catch of 14 yards the former atlanta falcon he played with them six years one year had 42 catches and comes up with that grab there's davis number 78 that one draft back in swans these guys going at one one another two number one draft picks both of them Number one's last year. Who goofed? I've got to know, he says. He says, I'll meet you after the game. First down. Boy, the wind is really picking up now, blowing from right to left in this field. Walker in the backfield, 525 left in the game. First down, Philadelphia. Herschel inside the 45 to the 43. So, well, Randall Cunningham really has played very well tonight, and I think if he can come back and play anywhere near he did in 1990, this is going to be a formidable Eagle team. But you see what happened in 1990 with Randall Cunningham and 91 without him? The TD passes, 34 interceptions, 13. That's a, those are team numbers. Cunningham had 30 of those. I mean, they're a, they're a completely different team with Randall Cunningham at the helm. Well, he was the leading rusher for him in 90, yeah. over 900 yards. See, another thing, no interceptions again tonight. Randall Cunningham, I, I think, has a great touchdown-to-interception ratio in his career and again tonight. And he has a guy who supports him he hasn't had before, number 34, Herschel Walker. This is a luxury he has never enjoyed since being the quarterback of the Eagles as he is in, able to advance the ball to the 42. Swan again on the tackle. 28 rushes now. 
Well, their leading rusher last year had, what, 440 yards, I believe it was. It was uh, James Joseph. Well, and you look at the Cardinals. They cannot get anybody to 100 yards. They've had seven straight games. They haven't, as a team, amassed 100 yards. So you've got to be able to run the football, and with Cunningham, his escapability, and Walker, you can power at you. That's a pretty good combination. Third and three. Cunningham almost to Calvin Williams. Tried to make the diving catch at the 28-yard line. Yeah, this is another pretty doggone good throw by Randall Cunningham. And we've talked about all the different kinds of throws he's made. Wow. I mean, he's thrown long balls. He's thrown screens. He's thrown short balls. He's thrown balls with touch. He's drilled them. He's had a vast array of different kinds of throws. And then scrambled for a first down. Fourth down and three. And so Fiegels will come in and punt. He lives here in the Phoenix area. A wind blowing that ball, and eventually down there was Seidner. They called him a Dave Maggot type player out of Hawaii. A 34 yard punt. He's down there quickly, but down it there. The Cardinals will have it. 338 left. Philadelphia by 10. Come. Cardinals with the football. They have all three timeouts remaining. They'll start this drive inside the 10 at the 7. Chandler. In relief of Rosenbaugh, who was hurt early in the game. Incomplete pass intended for Randall Hill at the 20-yard line. Cardinals going into this win now, which is really picked up. And here is tonight's silver bullet scoreboard to catch you up on week number two. Redskins wasn't easy, but they continue to have their dominance in RFK Stadium over the Falcons. Cowboys led 34 to nothing in that game. Sam White's with another win. As we continue to wheel through them, David Shula with another victory. Second down, 10. Jones in motion. Chandler comes out throwing, and it will be Randall Hill with the catch, and Hill goes out of bounds at the 31 for a first down. 23-yard completion. Well, it's not too often you can throw a long crossing route against this Philadelphia defense because it takes some time to develop. But the protection was good there. Hill number 81 on the left, breaks open per early. Chandler gets the ball timed perfectly, threw the ball on time, and that allowed him to catch the ball in front of the defender. The defender didn't have a chance, but it really started with pretty good protection. Clyde Simmons has been shaken up, so they're stopping play right now. He's back inside the five-yard line, played such a strong game. Looking at the rest of the action, the Lions picking up a victory as the Chiefs picking up win number two after beating San Diego last week. What a game this was as the Bills winning. They're trying to be the first to win the AFC three straight times since the Miami Dolphins did it in the mid-70s. 71, 72, and 73. So it'll be a first down at the 32 for Phoenix when we pick up play as Clyde Simmons coming off. We'll check to see who they're going to bring in to replace the all-pro defensive end. It'll be Mike Flores, a second-year man out of Louisville. This game isn't over. The Cardinals still only trail by 10 with 327. They have three timeouts. Now, the, the strong part of the Cardinal game is the receivers. The, the speed is Randall Hill and Ernie Jones. Centers is in the backfield. Pro goes in motion. And that ball broken up. He was trying to get it to Prohl, who had gone in motion and cut back over the middle of the field, and the connection not there. <laughs> I see Mike Golick left. I think he may have, somebody got a hand on it there. I think it may, it may well have been uh, been Golick, number 90, right in the middle of your screen. You know, that that is what Jerome Brown when he was with the Eagles, did such a great job of. Even though he was blocked, he could make plays like that, and Mike Golick just made one there. Second down, 10. Crow now in motion. Chandler being flushed out. He dumps it off. A little screen to Larry Centers, and again, those screens over the middle have not worked tonight. That's twice they've tried to pull that off, and the Eagles have reacted so well. They'll gain maybe a yard, but not much more than that. You know, the Philadelphia defense reacts so quickly to things. What might work against this defense really is some sort of reverse or misdirection play. Third down, still virtually 10 yards to go. 
Jones in motion again. 2.48 left in the game. Chandler intended for Hill and not close. Good coverage that time by John Booty. But there is a flag, a flag at the 25-yard line. And it's going to go against Phoenix. No, but it's, it, it'll be fourth down if they decline it. But uh, obviously they can't punt here in this situation. They're going to have to go for it. So really holding number 82 on the offense. Penalties declined. Fourth down. That was Butch Roll guilty of that. Well, here here's a situation on fourth and and ten. Is the first thing Chris Chandler has to tell his receivers is make sure whatever you do on the route you get past the first down marker. No eight yard routes. No seven yard routes. So they need to get to the 42. That's the first down marker that you're referring to on this fourth and ten. Their last gasp here with 243. Chandler avoiding the rush and the catch is made by Randall Hill and that will be enough for the first down. That was a tough yeah. catch. It was a tough catch and give Randall Hill some credit. He knew he needed at least 10. He picks up about 12, 13 yards on the catch in traffic. And a lot of speed receivers won't give you the play over the middle, but Randall Hill has tonight. They have their three timeouts remaining, going without a huddle, first down at the 45. Chandler, a lot of people in his face. He's trying to get out of there, being flushed out. Joyner, that's the ball away. It's picked up by Reggie White, and White will take it for six. And, Chandler's and Chandler is down, but it was Joyner that stripped it. Reggie White, who took it 37 yards, and the Eagle defense, as good as it gets, has done it again. The thing about this Eagle defense, no matter what the score, no matter what quarter, what down, they keep coming. They keep coming. Joyner's coming. You see Clyde Simmons is coming. Joyner refuses to quit. He forces the fumble. And big old Reggie White, all 285 pounds. You see the speed that the man's got? That's why he's a pretty good pass rusher. How would you like to tackle that? No, I wouldn't want to play against him at all. Nice man, but tough, tough defender. Joyner seemingly always around the football, and there was a good example of yeah. it again. He's not all that big by some standards. He's six foot two. He weighs in at 235 pounds. What they're waiting on right now is they don't have the net up to catch the football. And look at this crooked goal poster. Is that me? Yeah, no, that, that's no, not you have way too much water, Gary. We're gonna take you off the water. Okay. No, that 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 is crooked. There it is. They're gonna push the thing up. We got a guy holding. Can we send the guy down to do that. Yeah. No, we got a guy. There he is. There's a guy. They got everything in the NFL. They got guys that check your uniforms. We got guys with sticks that hold up crossbars. <laughs> I wonder if you there's know. a union for that. Yeah. Anyway, that fumble recovery by Reggie White was the second of his career that went for a touchdown. <laughs> getting on national television holding up a goal post. there you go how about that That's how often does that can you put that on your resume <laughs> he did it he fixed it look it's perfect now <laughs> well it's sagged again there he goes hold the phone whoops <laughs> bad job now could you imagine rizik will say i missed this if it's <laughs> let's see if it's a factor so it doesn't matter yeah. they are able to get it down by the way that 37 yard fumble recovery by white was not the longest Well, this defense makes things happen. Seth Joyner, Reggie White, think about this defense. They love to play football, and they love to play football together. And there's a big difference. White had a 70-yard return in 87. The Eagles with a 31-14 lead. And the defense, as it so often does, coming up with yet another fumble recovery. 37 yards for the touchdown. Last year, the Eagles had 22 fumble recoveries and 26 interceptions. After this, we'll be going to the two-minute warning as Bailey and Edwards go back deep. Unless, of course, he gets the touchback and the ball blown off because of the win. Really picking up here, blowing directly behind Ruzik. Philadelphia at home next week against Denver. They have an open date. Cardinals, such a tough schedule. They'll play Dallas, and then they have an open date at Dallas. Yeah. 
So the wind's going to carry that one back. Well hit, and they will have the touchback. So they'll bring the ball out to the 20-yard line. So the clock showing 155 after that kickoff. They'll set the ball at the 20-yard line. A lot of Eagle fans here in the Valley of the Sun. And so the two-minute warning is here. 31-14. Philadelphia going to pull into a tie for first in the NFC East. At the 20-yard line, the Cardinals have it. All three timeouts remaining, trailing 31-14. And, and Chris Chandler was able to gather himself and come back in the game, which is remarkable because he took a heck of a shot. A lot of people said, why draft Tony Saka? You've already got mm. quarterbacks. You yeah. find out Jeez. the depth starts to diminish in a hurry, don't you? A lot of criticism here about the fact they took Saka as their first pick. Chandler had that uh, 10 of percenters that's incomplete. It was tipped again by yeah. Golick. Golick has gotten up there twice yeah. to bat the ball down. See, sometimes that happens. If you aren't a great pass rusher, which Golick is not known for, is if you hang around close to the line of scrimmage and you time it right, you can bat a, a lot of balls down. <laughs> he's having a good time. He is having a good time. He did some bungee jumping on the offseason. He has his own radio show. Must be a big bungee. <laughs> <laughs> Following tonight's game, be sure to join us for the stadium show post game highlights, interviews. Join Ernie Johnson with all the scores and highlights of week two. Greg Sager has a report from San Francisco. Back to throw is Chandler, and he is buried again. And this time, it's Simmons, who had gone out of there earlier, shaken up, and he's come back to shake up Chandler. That's the fifth sack of the game. Now, remember, this team had 55 yeah. sacks last year. Well, the Eagles have different type of rushers, too, Gary. They've got an outside rusher in Simmons. They've got a, a power rusher in Reggie White. And they've got a speed rusher in Seth Joyner. Third and 20 now for Chandler. He's going to scramble out or try to. And down he goes. Reggie White's at his feet. And let's see. Also is Andy Harmon. Harmon's playing with a cast on his left wrist. He broke two bones in it. They haven't been able to devise anything yeah. that helps him grab hold of anyone. So he's literally playing with one arm. There's a guy playing with two arms, Reggie White. And big ones. Yeah. <laughs> we were interviewing him last night, and I was looking at him, I thought to myself, is there anybody stronger than that guy? He is something. Four and 25 now. Chandler throwing out on fourth and 25, oh, nice and the ball boy cut it. That is not one nice catch. How'd you like the spike? The full extension, caught it with his hands. He was wide open. And so the Eagles will get the football and Tim Rosenbaugh kind of showing with that body language the frustration of this night. Well, tonight's McDonald's player of the game is really no surprise. Fred Barnett, a career night. Eight catches, 193 yards, two touchdowns. And, and the way he set guys up too, Gary, that's what I love about him. I mean, he really set the defenders up. Aeneas Williams will remember him for a while. Oh, boy. Barnett. And Williams, the two wide receivers, had not played that much in the preseason. The timing was a little off with Cunningham, but I think they got it back. So the Eagles take over with a minute seven. Cardinals have uh, had their timeouts, but uh, let's see how the Eagles will like to do this. They'll drop to a knee. Cunningham will go down. Joe Bugle's got a tough time now, Gary. You mentioned the Cardinals' schedule. It's, it's gruesome from here on in. Gruesome, murderous. There's a lot of adjectives yeah. you could use. And to keep the guys from from throwing in the towel after two games and, and the schedule they have in front of him, he's got a lot of work to do. Here's how he's done against the NFC East. And, of course, he's had the most success against Philadelphia up to this point. He's never beaten the Giants and Redskins. Beat the Cowboys the year they went 1-15. and 15. So Chandler evidently will be starting next week. That separated shoulder of Rosenbaugh. They'll drop one more time, and this game will be over. And so Philadelphia has moved into first, a tie with Dallas at the top of the NFC East with a 2-0 record. And the Eagles continue their domination over the Cardinals as Phoenix has never beaten them here in Arizona, and the Cardinals have never won an opener here in Phoenix, Arizona. So Rich Kotite's team, 2-0. 31-14. 
Joe Bugle's got to get ready for those Cowboys who are tied with the Eagles at the top. The Cardinals for three quarters were in it, and then all of a sudden, Herschel Walker and that defense started to go to work. Be sure to stay with us now for the post-game show. Highlights, live interviews here from Tempe. The loom. We keep America's men comfortable by Isuzu, makers of incredible four-wheel drives, including the Isuzu Rodeo, Amigo, and the all-new, thoroughly redesigned Isuzu Trooper. And by McDonald's, home of the new McDonald's Guarantee. Welcome back to Tempe. The final score, Philadelphia 31, Phoenix 14. Tonight's game produced by Peter Lasser, directed by Lonnie Dale, Dennis Stone, our technical director. Our technical manager, Grover Huckleby, Stephanie Bradley, the unit manager, our associate director, Scott Cockerell, Jay Hoover, graphics, Joe Vincius and Rick Baker, our stage manager, Shannon Mizell, and our spotter, Tom Delnos. So for Pat Hayden and the rest of our TNT crew, I'm Gary Bender, reminding you to join us next week when we travel to Buffalo, where the Bills play host to the Indianapolis Colts in an AFC Eastern Division matchup. The action begins at 7.30 Eastern time with a Silver Bullet Stadium show. Stay tuned. Coming up next on TNT, the stadium show post-game show. Bob Neal will be with Herschel Walker as his guys get ready to show you highlights and interviews with the star players. Ernie Johnson's in our studio with highlights of today's action. Craig Steger has a report from Candlestick Park. The stadium show post-game is coming up next. <laughs>